there we go hey everybody hope you guys are all having a fantastic day today hey doge master and hey jonathan hope you guys are both having a good night today we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of different stuff here i wasn't able to stream last night because i was uh, stuck up in seattle but there's going to be a lot to talk about we're going to be talking about bitcoin breaking out we have about another 35 seconds before breakout is confirmed above the 20 week moving average which is going to be pretty exciting so We'll be talking about that, a whole bunch of different cryptocurrencies, and then also how we're going to prepare for next week in which we have a major midterm election out here for the United States. And on top of that, we have to deal with the CPI data, which could really give a boost to this current rally or which could really just destroy any hope of us having a rally over the <laughs> during November, right? So as you guys can see right now, we've about six seconds left. We just want to actually close above this line. It seems like it's going to happen. And there we go. Uh, boom. There we go. We just officially broke out above, there you go, right here. We broke above the Fibonacci extension level and as well as that we've managed to break above and close above, well not close above just yet, but uh, we managed to close above on the daily chart, I should say, the 20 day moving average here, or excuse me, 20 week moving average. That's a huge accomplishment. It does mean that Bitcoin has the opportunity, guys, over the next few days to go back up to at least twenty-two to $23,000. So I know some of the coins have been popping off here over the last few days. You all have your opportunities to buy. You guys can still be buying right now. I'm taking it easy and mostly doing day trading and you guys know dollar cost averaging. But if you guys are looking for some swing trades, there are still some opportunities. Tomorrow, um, tomorrow's Saturday. Normally I don't stream Saturday, but what I'm gonna do is do a member stream because I haven't been able to do one all week. I'm gonna do a member stream probably sometime um, around noon time, you know, around noon out the Pacific Northwest, which means like three o'clock on the East Coast. Later on tomorrow night, I'll be doing another stream for everybody. And that stream is gonna be more uh, focused on just finding breakouts, okay? So tomorrow's stream, uh, maybe it'll just be an hour, but any coin that hasn't popped off yet, we're gonna be looking to see if we can find an opportunity to make some money off of those, okay? So here's what we wanna talk about as far as uh, Bitcoin for now, okay? Uh, the good news is we managed to close above the Fibonacci extension level plus the 20 week moving average here. We've been trying for a while, as you guys can see, and we just haven't been able to do it. Now we've finally been able to do it and things look a lot nicer for us now. Now we could actually have a really nice surge going into the tomorrow, uh, tomorrow day, right? Not just some, uh, for today's day candle. We can have a surge up here to at least $22,000, guys. That's not unrealistic. Remember, guys, we were looking to have a nice surge way back here until what happened? We ran into a Fibonacci level and some other stuff, of course. But really, it was just bad economic data came and it just tanked the entire market. Now... We had, you know, not, we don't have any bad economic data out. We had a decent job support. The only bad economic data that could be coming out is going to be next Thursday during the CPI report, right? That's when things can get a little bit more messy for everybody. Until that happens, we have an opportunity, like we normally do, to run up into CPI data. Once that occurs, you know, you guys can make some good money off of that. And again, you, I would do short term swing trades or day trading primarily. I'm still doing my dollar cost averages, but I'm not like buying in hopes that maybe a month from now we're going to be looking really good. I've been making more money by just trying to trade some of these waves that we've been uh, playing with. Just trade the waves instead of trying to buy here and sell up here. It just makes me more money. I can short, I can, you know, long, basically just going off of some of these general trends like that, right? That's been working fine with those little day trades in there, or you could be doing some of the smaller day trades like this if you wanted to, but you know, everybody has their own strategy, correct? Right? All right, uh, I'm gonna go over here very fast. So Bitcoin's still doing strong. We'll talk about Dogecoin and a, a couple other things here. Um, there was another Bitcoin chart that I think I gave to you guys a, a couple weeks ago or a week ago as we were kind of talking about what happens if we kind of rally in November and rally into uh, what you might want to say, just the CPI data, which we normally run into here. I don't know which one it is. There's the Bitcoin breakout we were talking about. By the breakout, look what's happening now. It's still moving okay, right? Uh, depending on what your strategy is, you guys are making money in different ways right now. Uh, I think this is it. I think maybe we were looking at it from a weekly chart perspective. Yeah, this is probably what we're looking at. Um, we talked about this a few weeks ago as far as it moving up and then dipping back down. Maybe sometime during the next uh, next week or the week after that. We'll have to see, really see what the CPI data is, guys. But we are managing to, it looks like as of now, we want to close above this 20-week moving average. And the last time we did that, we had a pretty nice boom above that uh, that 20 moving average here. 
we don't have to worry about the 50 acting as a level of resistance even the last time it didn't even really act like a level of resistance that's still pretty far away the only level of resistance i see right now from a moving average perspective on the, on these um weekly moving averages here is the 200 and you guys can see it was a level of resistance but it didn't really stop us from breaking out above it it wasn't like it was just some hard level that you know was uh, stopping us now we found that we found a way to break out above this off of some uh, okay economic news but mostly just the market is tired of falling a little bit here and i think people are just expecting a, a a winter rally or a q4 rally here even though tech is falling you are seeing a lot of different stocks up there, especially energy and some other uh sectors out there doing fairly well but okay um let's talk about a few other things out there right now and you guys know i'm not using my normal chart so just bear with me for a second while i kind of reset all this stuff ethereum just like bitcoin already had its breakout so if you guys are more of a traditionalist like me that trades breakout or zones you guys had the opportunity to trade the breakout i would say there we go let's extend that um although you might have had to wait a little bit of time before you're able to make some good money off of it Here's what I think. Um, so you can see right here, Ethereum is basically just testing out the 200 weekly moving average. We just had a golden cross here. We talked about this with Bitcoin, also had a golden cross, good buying signals. I think Ethereum's ready to pop off and test out 2000 um, bucks. And that may seem a little bit of extreme, but I mean, as long as we can close above this and as long as we don't have some type of crazy surprise, it might be a little bit of a bumpy ride there, but ethereum is gearing up to make a big breakout above the 200 daily moving average we haven't been above the 200 daily moving average since april april and then before then we hadn't been above it since january all right so we've rarely been above this 200 daily moving average all year and now we're having another opportunity right now so if you guys did want to take that gamble if you guys didn't trade the breakout that occurred a while ago maybe just hop onto the four hour chart so you can see what i'm talking about See that big force will break out the dip that comes back down always and then it continues to chug back up if you guys didn't buy the breakout here and you guys are still looking for an opportunity if i just go over here and change this 200 uh moving average on the four hour chart and just turn it into a daily chart that's our level of resistance if you want to buy at any point over the next few hours or let's just say 10 12 hours whatever that may be for you you're going to be hoping that we can get a nice solid breakout and that's going to pump us back up to at least 1800 dollars for ethereum and if we're lucky maybe back up to 2000 dollars, maybe by uh tuesday wednesday but i don't think it's impossible especially since ethereum if you guys check it out today you know what did it just jump up by from open to close about about seven percent if Ethereum wants to go from here back up to 2000, that's about 25%. That's possible for something like Ethereum, which has been popping off a lot. And by that, I mean like just last like week or so, 25, 27%, we're looking for another 25%, okay? Luckily, all these market caps are a lot lower right now, so you guys can make some good opportunities here. But the market looks to be in an okay spot. Watch out, remember we talked about this before uh, over the past few days watch out what happens when you run into the cpi report if the cpi report is bad we're probably going to tank if it's good we can extend a lot of these breakouts a lot of these small rallies that we're seeing in a lot of different cryptocurrencies out there and stocks we can see those rallies extending get a little bit better but a lot of this guys is if you guys are making trades right now just be careful because as we go into the new week and we'll be talking about this in more depth we got midterms guys midterms are just going to be a shit show they've already been a shit show if i don't even watch the i i rarely watch the news but i've been watching the news lately just because i want to see what's happening with the elections just kind of get an idea of what's going on every other commercial is like an attack ad between uh my two senatorial candidates which are uh, tiffany smiley which is the republican and patty murray which is the incumbent uh, democrat it's all just throwing shit against the wall hoping something sticks by both of them um so I'm getting bored with politics here, extremely bored, but I'm hoping after Tuesday, we'll be good to go. I think the market may get a little bit antsy uh, afterwards, but I feel like the election's mostly gonna have an impact on the futures markets and not so much on the actual, um, you know, what happens um, Wednesday morning, so to speak, okay? And then moving over to Thursday, we gotta worry about that CPI data. That's gonna be a pain in the butt. We'll get through it, guys, but we have to hope that if you want to see some of these breakouts extend, if you guys follow my my, my, my simple trading strategy, I would say, uh, and you guys trade the breakouts or the zones or whatever you guys trade, you guys are going to be hoping that the CPI data is, you know, it's less than expectations. If it's above expectations, even if it's lower, that's not what we want to see. We want to see really good CPI numbers come out. 
we don't want to have a, a, a bad time on Thursday because that'll just, you know, the whole Thursday would just wreck the entire market here after a very volatile day from the election. And what do I mean by some of this? I know uh, some of you guys have been asking about this over the past couple of days. One of you guys asked me, um, I think it was like two days ago, um, what do I mean by zones and breakouts? Because a lot of you guys weren't with me when I started streaming and do when uh, I was streaming Dogecoin. And I kind of just told you guys about breakouts and zones. Um, I think some of you guys like zones more right now in this bear market, but both I think are applicable here. Um, basically, when you guys hit those like old levels of resistance, they kind of turn into support levels. And instead of trying to use these lines as like hard support levels where you're just going to short, you could attend, you could, um, since we're kind of going more choppy, you could see these as zones that say, hey, I would probably want to buy between these two levels, kind of find that next pivot point right there. And you can kind of see I matched up right there. You'd be buying in these zones over here and you'd be selling off on the zones like up here, all right? So you buy low, sell high, and still within that gap, I mean, let's just say you bought the line, let's not say you bought in the zone just up right above it. Even just getting up here, that's like a 40% profit. That's normally what you guys are doing during the zones. But if you guys don't feel comfortable buying at the zones, because if, you know, in hindsight, in hindsight, a lot of this always looks pretty scary, like, um, like that. You're kind of wondering, are we going to be tipping down? Are we going to be going back down here? Economics news wasn't good. All the news all the time isn't that fun to watch, right? Um, you might say, hey, just to be safe, I might just wait and I might buy on the breakout, right? And that's perfectly okay. We all have our different levels of risk tolerance. Some of us don't want to want to buy in these zones because they're just so volatile. Imagine buying over here, then one day just watching the whole thing tank, right? Then you might sell over here instead of just holding. You know, a lot of stuff can happen there. Now, uh... There's a tool here that's not being shown to me on my screen. That is, uh, is it hidden? Nope. Let me get the replay then. Yeah, I want to excited that. Okay. But then if you buy the breakout right up here, then you have the opportunity to not make as much money, but still making money. And if you guys are trading Ethereum or anything like that right now, let me just actually get out of this little zone mode here. Um, there we go. If you guys are going down this path, you guys have two Fibonacci extensions. I would um, recommend you use. You don't have to use them, of course, but the classic one for Ethereum we've been using it for a while. Guess what? Oops. Just like Bitcoin, we managed to close out above it today. That's awesome. Uh, only thing is, of course, we're dealing with the 200 daily moving average. Ethereum has a good shot of popping up above this. And where's our next target? Around $1,700. If you were to buy a theme right now after the breakout above the Fibonacci extension, not as powerful as this breakout, but still a breakout nonetheless, you know, that's a cool 8% profit. If you put a 5X leverage on there, that's a cool, like, you know, 40% profit. Not bad. 2% um, leverage, still pretty good, right? Depends on your leverage. You don't have to use leverage. If you guys are using Robinhood, be happy with the 5, 10X, 8%, okay? Um, but that's what you guys are hoping for right now as far as Ethereum is concerned. And the way I see Ethereum right now, which is kind of why I'm more bullish running into this uh, CPI data, not only because we normally run up into CPI data, it's just something that happens. I don't know why, but it does happen. Um, you guys see the green line on your screen. That's the 20 week moving average, or excuse me, 20 day moving average. We're screaming up right now, looking like we want to have a golden cross between the 20 and the 200. We haven't had that golden cross since August of 2021. We haven't had that golden cross in a long, long time, okay? So that could uh, lead us to have some good fun there. Again, the big caveat to all the bullish talk I'm giving today, guys, regardless if you bought down here or on a breakup for any of your stocks because uh, or currencies, because a lot of currencies broke out uh, over the past few days and a lot of... Uh, we're at zones over the past week, as we talked about. If inflation data is bad or worse than expected, that will cripple any momentum we have made going into Thursday. Election is a wild card. I don't think it's going to cause too much of an impact, but we'll see. OK, I think if there's any impact, it'll mostly happen in the futures market. OK, um, so we'll be paying more attention to that as well. But let's talk about some of these other coins, everybody. Uh, well, actually, dollar index. Dollar index took a little bit of a dip today. This is this is not different than what happens normally. We spike up, we've been coming down, spike up, come down. We've been talking about this for a while. This is not something that's incredibly crazy. I would say the one thing about today is we've just come down a little bit more than normal, right? We've come down quite a bit. We normally don't have those huge moves. Normally, it takes two to three days to make the amount of moves, uh, make the amount of uh, move the amount that we did just in one day today. That's an easy way to say it.
All right. But the, uh, the dollar index market is um, closed until Monday, as you guys know. Monday morning, Sunday night, or something like that. Uh, all right. So we talked about Ethereum. Let's go over here to Dogecoin very fast. Dogecoin has been stagnant. It already broke out a while ago. If you guys bought the breakout or you guys are just holding Dogecoin because we've talked about Dogecoin so much or bought at support. Uh, I, think I, would, I would keep on forgetting where this is. I'm in a different uh, charting environment this one. Uh, uh, there you go. Yeah. If you guys bought through any of the support down here, you guys are still very happy with Dogecoin and you're hoping it takes that next leg up. But right now, it's just facing some resistance from a um, pretty decent uh, resistance zone over here. Let me just kind of point. Uh, sorry there. All right. You can even extend this all the way out here a little bit if you wanted to. But we're facing some resistance right now. I think we're on the lower end of that scale right now. To me, Dogecoin isn't really something I want to be trading right now. I just kind of want to buy it for the long term. You guys know me. I like to buy and just trade. Uh, it already popped. I want to take my profits there. Uh, if you guys are long-term holdings like me, you're not doing it. I didn't buy any Dogecoin for a breakout. I didn't sell any Dogecoin after the breakout. I'm just holding for the long-term here. Um, but some of the other coins you guys may, be, may have been watching is, excuse me, Ethereum Classic. Had a little bit of a pop today. Just had a death cross a few days ago. But with the market looking like it wants to do a little bit of a reversal here, you may see Ethereum Classic pop both above the 50-day moving average and the 200-daily moving average, leading us to that golden cross. Because in order to see that 20-day uh, that 20-day moving average starting to creep back up here, after a while, you know, uh, just a few days ago, that everything was coming down. We've had a little bit of a spike that does change things right now, just because you know we're running up into CPI data. This happens every time, but I'm excited about it. We haven't been excited about anything really crazy going on for a hot minute here, right? Mostly just excited about volatility. Uh, but if that does occur, everybody, those two levels, I'd probably say for Ethereum Classic, watch out for that $30 level. That's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to get back above. However, now that we kind of have an established low here as we're trying to climb back up, let me just make sure those are the June lows. Yeah. Let's go to that low. We can go to this relative high. Oh, let me get the magnet on. There we go. Squish that down, switch that up. There you go. We don't really have much resistance until we get to about $28.27. After that, we start getting back into that zone where the next resistance is up here on 33. So I would say if you guys were hoping for a big move over the next few days, I'd be scaling out probably somewhere around 30 bucks. You guys know me though at the same time. I don't stop saying the same phrase, but you guys know that I tend to sell a little bit early just because I want to make sure no matter what happens, I'm walking away with some good profits. But if I was just doing that one buy in, one sell i would have probably uh i don't know where i would have bought on this one because i don't really buy much of their class it's just long-term holds for me but i'd consider selling anywhere between 28 bucks and 33 dollars but i'm probably even 20 uh 28 dollars to 30 dollars but that means you know if you guys are lucky it might even run up to like 37 dollars up here 38 um but we'll see what happens there uh stmx you guys know this is one of my favorites here i ended up buying a um uh, i think like another 500 bucks of this I think this is like a week ago it really hasn't done anything crazy i don't think in that week um i just saw it was like steadily building up some space and we saw that bitcoin wasn't breaking down so i was like why the heck not um not so much of a trade but i might trade it here you guys know that this thing likes to spike people are accumulating this one for the long term uh mostly because it's like an established business but you know at least over those past few days i think i bought it somewhere around here or somewhere around here it wasn't at a low point it was just me buying it just to buy some more it's moved up around might be like five percent nothing too crazy there however we're pretty far away from that next 200 weekly to me 200 daily moving average that was kind of a resistance level for us before but this thing just has a habit of spiking up so uh you know let's let's leave it at that if you guys are looking for um let's see if we can do this over here zoom out a little bit some of these longer forms of resistance you might find it over here around um uh, over a penny a little bit but i don't know if we're going to have an opportunity to spike up like that unless it's like for just a few minutes and then you're going to be really watching stmx to actually sell it off okay uh, on the weekly chart though something i did find was interesting we still haven't managed to break out above the 20 week moving average last time we did it was only for a short amount of time then we crashed back down that may happen this time although we're still below it and we have an opportunity to break out above it again okay Okay, I don't think I need to go over all these coins here. I'll let you guys ask questions as need be. But you can see some coins are doing okay. Some are still doing poor. Like I see Spell Token right now. That's something I'm invested in. 
It's down a little bit, but that's because it had a little bit of a pop yesterday. This did not pop up my scanners. You guys know I, I own a little bit of this stuff. I would have sold it if I could. Oh, yeah. Let me see right here. Let me go back down a little bit. Hi, low. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I would have probably sold it around here, you, you know, one level. But it ended up going up a lot more. Huh. I'll have to keep my own spell token. I wonder why it popped up. Although, I have to say, guys, spell token is not something that's, like, been doing amazing for me. But I do know... Oh, let me actually just find it over here in my watch list. Um, I do know it is a very small market cap coin. So, if we go over here, spell token. That's Starlink. Let me go slowly. There it is. Yeah, it's only a $100 million market cap uh, coin, everybody. And for the last 90 days, you see how a lot of this stuff is up. This is one of those things in that block of mine that is not doing great. Um, but you guys know most of these are just watch lists in small, small positions. I'm hoping they turn into something good, though, because they're, again, only small market cap coins here. Hmm. Anything else really popping off today? Let me go over here very fast. Telecoin still doing good. Decentralized games is good. Spell tokens in the last 24 hours are doing pretty good. Center features doing pretty good. Okay, that's not too bad. Oh, this block coin though. Block V is up 100% in the last 90 days. That's not bad at all. Um, and before I start answering you guys' questions, we start, you know, talking about a whole bunch of different stuff out there. Um, I officially like really started hunkering down and working on this long tutorial for you guys. Um, it says episodes here on the left hand side. I'm pretty sure you guys probably can't see all this. It's not going to be episodes more as in chapters because I'm going to break all this stuff into videos. But today I was able to make a short three minute video that I'll be posting tomorrow talking about, you know, welcome to the course. You guys will be learning about day swing trading, you know, stocks, options, crypto, who I am. Not really that much of that. Not much of that in that. In the intro, really. I'm, I'm not too important in this equation, guys. Um, uh, you know, after that, we're going to be talking about exchanges, setup, stocks, crypto options, preparing to trade, technical analysis, day trading, swing trading. Um, there's also going to be some other stuff I have to build in here, like how to start saving for uh, investing, how to start budgeting, how to become you know smart with your money so you actually have money to spend, um, you know, that type of stuff. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. And I, I was trying to calculate the hours for today as far as how many hours of video you guys are going to watch during this entire course. And I was trying to like scale it out as far as other YouTubers are concerned because, you know, like here, um, count to how to day trade. Okay. Um, what the heck was on my front page? Oh, okay. All right. That's good. I like Ron Swanson. Um, but you see all these videos like this that are like 18 minutes, 24 minutes, uh, 11 minutes. I watched a lot of these videos to try to figure out what they're talking about. 45 minutes. Um, you can even go over here to go to uh, over 20 minutes and you get some videos like over an hour, right? Um, three hours right here, right? That's an audio book though. That's not actually, what do you call it? Uh, an hour. Oh, this is just people talking. Yeah, so this course that I'm building out for you guys, it is going to take months of my time to make this up, but I finally like adjusted like a cool two to three hours a day to work on this course. It's going to be about 50 hours, everybody. Like it's going to be like 50 hours of learning a lot of it to make it easier on me is going to be me doing recordings of myself on trading view because trading view seems like the most universally used one i was kind of debating on whether or not to do um trading view versus td ameritrade which i kind of have a better hand over td ameritrade um what ended up winning out is since i'm going to be teaching you guys crypto examples as well td ameritrade doesn't have crypto i'm not going to even try to do that rabbit hole so um i'm going to be doing that and i'm really excited about it but it's just going to take time and it's going to be dry and interesting at the same time. You'll be learning a lot, um, but you guys will um, have a little bit of homework in this course. And there's one thing that's escaping my mind, but it's important. Oh, uh, a lot of this is going to be presented in terms of PowerPoint presentations and a mix of trading view. Okay, not everything that revol that helps you become a good full time trader is actually about charts. A lot of it is about how you manage your money, the process of how you have to use your brain to think. Um, and that'll help me kind of put all this stuff out there because I have like, there are people with ADHD and there are people that have really bad ADHD. I have really bad ADHD, okay? Um, 
So this helps me stay a little bit more organized and kind of figure out what's going on. So if I go over to like Google Slides or PowerPoint, probably Google Slides make it easier on me. Um, as I build all this stuff out, um, I'll be able to kind of see what I'm talking about very clearly without having to read and go over a whole bunch of stuff. My brain overloads very easily, which is why I like trading stocks and crypto so much for a living. I have a whole bunch of charts. When I do all the work ahead of time, I'm just waiting for a little bit of bell or a whistle, or I'm just watching a chart, like a five minute chart, 15 minute chart. It's very easy for me to pay attention. When I'm building out a course, my brain after like a half an hour feels like it's about to explode out of stress from just working. I'm not a person that likes to work. Um, in the traditional sense of corporate America, okay? Um, so give me some time on it. The next video I'm gonna be starting tomorrow is basically how to budget. How to budget to have enough money in your account while you're learning to trade. And some of you guys may not need this video, but I'd probably say it's good just because a recession is incoming, a bad economy is gonna get worse here pretty soon. Better to know how to manage your money <laughs> and, and, and uh, to help you guys uh, in the long run here, okay? All right, but enough of that. I'm working on it. I got the first video done. Uh, I'm literally just waiting on my guy here uh, to give me a thumbnail and then I'll post it, okay? So let me go over here very fast. Um, this one, yeah, right there. So we're gonna use this picture, put a little cap on me. It'll be really nice and easy, uh, nice and simple. This is an old picture of me, but basically have a little bit of a hat, make the thumbnail look good, and we'll see uh, how that thumbnail turns out. But at the end of the day, I'm only gonna really be promoting the course. It's gonna be free. I'm only gonna be promoting the course to you guys through stream. You guys know that YouTube really doesn't like my content and I'm fine with that. But if you guys wanna watch the video, I'll just kind of remind you that the course is there uh, as I kind of build it out. Cause it, you know, it's not like you guys gonna get the whole thing at once. It'll be piece by piece. Um, and you know, it'll be there. Um, but I, it, it's not going to be like YouTube's probably not going to just show it to you every single day. It's just not the way, not the way I'm building up the course because what I've learned by watching all these courses here, all of them, or not all of them, but a lot of them, they're all designed to work in the YouTube algorithm, which means that they can't, they can't boggle down and really focus on a really boring subject because the way YouTube will look at the video is they'll see this, um, Let me see if I can go to the tutorial that I have. Analytics. See more. Oh gosh, I forgot how many shorts I have now. I can't see all my other content that I wanted to. Oh, there it is. Okay. Like this one, the, the 22 settings of Envis scanners. I only get views on this from YouTube search. Browse features a little bit, but mostly search, right? Um, you'll see right here that it'll show you how people, want, like when people watching my video, how it goes down over time. Well, when I bog down and I get very specific about a topic to make sure you guys understand what's going on, the average person that's trying to learn how to invest, they're not gonna watch it because it's very boring. All, the only people that usually watch the entirety of my videos are the people that are really like, really trying to go full time, but at the same time, they're, they're trying to be entertained at the same time. I'm not gonna be able to entertain you guys while giving you guys this very boring, topics right try to read a book about investing it's not really entertaining they've tried to make them entertaining but at the end of the day it's just not entertaining so um i'm gonna get used to seeing that line just drop off of a rock as soon as you guys click on it like this however people that want to learn they'll search it and they'll try to figure it out right um because uh people on average for this 18 minute video they only watched about four minutes of an 18 minute video right uh, at the end of the day, only about 11% watch the entirety of the video. It, it happens. I'm not mad at it. It's the way YouTube is, YouTube is built out. I'm just letting you guys know that um, you guys might not see my uh, my videos kind of out there on the main screen. You guys are going to have to be reminded by me through this, uh, through streaming, okay? But okay, buddy, that's enough of all the ranting and whatnot. It's pouring down out here in the Pacific Northwest. My lights were flickering like a good hour ago. Let's hope. I don't lose power here, but if I do, you'll just see everything go to black and I'll just put a little post out later on. I don't think it will, but I have some candles just in case. Okie dokie. Hope you guys are all doing okay. Hey, Alex. Hey, Puma. Hey, Darren. Hey, uh, Cheat Code Fitness. Hope I haven't seen you for a minute, dude. Hope you're doing well. Can hope you're doing well. Um, and buy it for that. Can't, I'm happy to see you back here. Uh, let me see what's going on very fast. Let me zoom up a little bit here. Hey, Chef. Hope you're doing well. Monica. Hope you're doing very, very well. 
BGB is still holding up fairly well. It doesn't look like it wants to drop back down below 15 cents right now, which is beautiful. It's like way above that right now. Um, let's see. And hey, those masters 88, a good buy right now. I mean, for me, it looks like since Bitcoin just managed to break above that 20 week moving average, a lot of these different assets right now have room to run. Right now you're seeing 88 at this level of resistance. If I can just find my little marker tool, let me go to the cheat sheet down here. We're at this level of resistance. If we decide to break back up, what's really that level of resistance for us? We don't really have much resistance until maybe we get up towards 45, 50 cent range. So yeah, I mean, I would say it's a decent buying opportunity. Bitcoin right now seems like it wants to pop. My favorite thing to be buying right now, I would probably say, is it Ethereum Classic? Four hour chart here, which one is it? Yeah, probably Ethereum Classic or Ethereum. I like to trade Ethereum with leverage, so that's why I kind of prefer it. But Ethereum wants to break out above its 200 daily moving average here. It wants to break out and go up to test out about $1,800. If that occurs, that could be a nice, easy profit for a lot of you guys. Um, plus, we have the Golden Cross uh, shooting up here pretty soon for between the 20, the 200 daily moving average and the 20 daily moving average. So I would say, yeah. Um, primarily for me, though, I like to trade zones or I like to trade breakouts majority of the time i prefer trading breakouts over a zone so for ethereum that breakout is what i wanted to trade to make money there as far as ada the breakout you're probably wanting to trade hasn't even happened yet or has it not happened yet let me try this out though false breakout that's not fun let's see the resistance is what you're facing right now let's go to the 15 minute chart trying yeah trying i would say but that's probably not the level that everybody else is using i'm missing something here no this is just oversold yeah it, oh it fell down below the june lows while well, a whole bunch of other stuff didn't this is just trying to find its way back up oh okay all right well let me see over here then Oh, wow yeah that's really far off because it fell down here yeah um i would still say it's fine to buy i think i still think it's good um just watch out for your average breakdowns here nothing too extreme bounce off of that support over here the last few days also bounce off for the 20 day moving average looking for a golden cross pretty soon it's something you'd probably want to hold for at least one and a half to two days here honestly for me guys is i make some trades later on tonight after the stream is over I'll probably hold these trades for maybe 12 to 24 hours, not much uh, later than that. Most because I don't have the time to watch this stuff. It's the weekend for a lot of you guys, so you guys might have the opportunity here, or maybe some of you guys work over the weekend. Um, but I think, yeah, I think the majority of these uh, coins out here are, are pretty solid. Just be careful of stuff like Matic. If you guys missed Matic, be careful about chasing it. Uh, Matic is usually something that's pretty difficult to try to time. You can even see we broke down a while ago, bounced off of the Fibonacci levels. Worked out okay. This is a oh, this is a Fibonacci retracement levels, not Fibonacci extensions. But we managed to bounce off it. Usually, when it comes to Matic, though, you like those weekly charts. See, weekly we didn't break down; we just bounced. Managed to make our way back up here, and then what you guys are gonna be looking for here? Let me just get rid of all this crap now. Is yeah, we're already getting close to all that, aren't we? Um. Watch out for like a dollar forty-two. I would say we're already at a dollar twenty-six. Um, I'd be careful of some of those levels here. Some resistance there managed to break out into a double top, got knocked back down, still moving up in a general direction. I would not want to be buying right now, um, but that's just my you know uh, risk reward analysis kind of popping off in my head. The time to buy this would have been a while ago as we were heading for support. Or if I can just uh, let me see if I can show this to you guys very fast. Um, breaking out. Uh, let me zoom in. Yeah. Breaking out above the Fibonacci extension level right there, or if you guys like the, the typical breakouts with the trend line, breakout held support bounce. You guys could have bought there or on the on the dip or you know, moving back up. Either way, you guys have an opportunity, but be careful of some of those coins that have already popped up. Um, they're fun to trade. Don't get me wrong, day trading have some fun. But if you guys are going to try to swing it for a day or two, be more cautious. Okay, be a little bit more cautious. Uh, you might see Matic do something similar to what Dogecoin did as far as have a nice, beautiful rocket ship. 
and then stagnate for a little bit and we're just waiting for dogecoin to probably pop up towards 15 cents over the next few hours or so uh, next day yeah 8 to 12 hours something like that i don't want to see this death cross happen for dogecoin that would really be good for us we need to see dogecoin pop up sometime over the next what, three and a half hours left eight to 16 hours i want to see dogecoin ripping here guys i i want to see it ripping um and i think it can um we just don't want to see that happen because i think longs will take control as long as bitcoin is still popping off here we don't want to see that hey even after we manage to break out above the fibonacci extension level for bitcoin and the 20 week moving average here if we find a way to mess this up before the end of the week you know as we kind of head into sunday that's where everything gets really ugly really fast let's hope it doesn't happen but we have all the momentum working on our side if i can extend this out a little bit all right you see this bullish divergence right here we managed to break out a while ago maybe i can show it to you like that we managed to break out a while ago and we're now just seeing the effects of that because when that divergence is actually broken we actually came crashing down <laughs> um when just now seeing the effects now that we finally have this uh, uh this level of support i guess you would call we're looking a little bit better here but man guys um to me it's still a market of short-term trades uh and just be aware that we do have the election coming up on tuesday midterm elections coming out everybody go vote if you i don't care who you're voting for just go vote and go tell whatever politician you like or you hate that you hate or you like them or you just don't like them or you don't want to vote for them whatever Go vote for somebody that you uh, that you think will represent your values properly in Congress. Um, uh, now, you know, election and C CPI data. Until those things come our way, you know, I think we're in an okay spot. Primarily, I think crypto is a decent spot to be in until at least Sunday night. Then we might see futures kind of bounce around a little bit. But I don't see too much, um, too many headwinds at this moment in time, in this moment in time. Let's just say that CPI data, a whole other story. I'm terrified of what could happen on that day. Um, we're either going to have a massive boost up towards like 28, 29, $30,000 through November. If we have good CPI numbers, we could be crashing back down to like 18, $19,000 if it's really bad CPI numbers. Um, so, you know, it, it's really going to be how bad or how good uh, inflation is. Inflation is going to be bad, I guess, either way, but, you know, not as bad as expected or worse than expected pop this up over here very fast let's go over here there we are see because i do want to see a big move from bitcoin here like guys after we've had this nice breakout we need to follow this up as far as a day trader perspective here we need to follow this up to have some really nice moves and by following it up i mean i would love to see bitcoin at least try to get up to at least twenty one thousand five hundred. that's like less than 400 points away from where we are now i'd like to see that big pop happen sometime soon soon while i'm actually streaming here and hey chef tacos yeah uh, a new chipotle just opened up a, like a couple blocks away from my house or like a couple miles away from my house and you know i was curious like hmm, i haven't had chipotle in a while i wonder what i could actually get there and i was like should i get a quesadilla burrito nachos or tacos so i'm asking you guys that what do you guys think i should get or what do you get well it's more about what you guys like but it, it'll kind of help my help me to uh, decide what i want to get from chipotle because for lunch today i ended up having um i skipped breakfast what did i have for lunch i had air fried duck that was baked with uh homemade fried rice and two pieces of gyoza with some homemade gyoza sauce it was really really good oh and some chopped up green onions that was great um but that took some time i don't want to make food tonight <laughs> it's a friday night everybody oh it's a friday night everybody oh my gosh it's friday um all right well i got the good old good old glen finish here i'll be drinking some of this uh with you guys live cheers I did just get myself a cup of water because I am very dehydrated, but I'm anticipating a larger move happening while I'm streaming tonight, uh, or at least some volatility. So hopefully we end up getting that while we're live. Okay, so let me drink my water. It's only 5:30 on the West Coast. By the time it turns to six o'clock, seven, I'll be good to go. <laughs> and hey, IBZ trade uh, tequila. Tequila sounds awesome right now. And hey, everyone, hope you're doing well, my man. Let's see. All right, guys. Oh. Yeah, I can turn on the music just a tad right there. Uh, what's right here? It'd be cool if you do a member stream of stock analysis. Hey Alex, I'm doing that tomorrow. It's gonna be members only. Um, you know what I'll do? Um, I was thinking about this a couple days ago. What I'll probably do for tomorrow is um, I'll do a stream, but members only chat. Members only chat. So uh, 
I think you remember this, Alex, but um, basically only members can chat and uh, everybody can watch, but only members can chat and we can just do a 100% uh, stock analysis day. I'd be happy with that. The only thing is like I say we're only going to do stock analysis. Then some member that didn't know that I'd said only stock analysis will ask me about crypto. Then I kind of just branch into it. But uh, I'm not good at saying no when it comes to subscribers to members, I guess I would say, right? But yeah, I'm going to be doing something like that tomorrow. Uh, it'll be around, uh, let me just give it a hard time. Let me just say noon. Uh, so that means uh, 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I'll do a live stream where only members can ask questions. So it'll be a members only chat box. And then um, you can ask me any question you want to, whether it be Apple, Tesla, uh, wh whatever you guys are looking at. Because um, earnings have been all over the place this uh, this cycle. And it's just been a bloodbath. If you've done horribly or you have poor guidance, you've just been annihilated. Even that, um, I won't go into it now, but even that, we'll talk about tomorrow, but even the Amazon that I bought like a few days ago, like Amazon 94, I was like, okay, sweet. I bought Amazon $94. It's already down at $90, <laughs> right? Um, you know, so everything continues going down. Even if it's dollar cost averaging, I like, I still kick myself in the foot or kick myself for, um, you know, just not being more patient, just waiting for it to come back down. The whole market's all over the place, which gives us a good a few buying opportunities. Um, and hey, Ken, I don't know if Robinhood's going to have stop losses uh, anytime soon. I really want them to, but it's just been a hassle for them to really add some new stuff. They've been more preoccupied with adding coins, it seems like, instead of uh, making their app better overall. Um, I used to have a contact at Robinhood. He was... Um, find his name. He started a podcast or something, and he left Robinhood. But... Um, So yeah, Nick, he used to work at Robin Hood, but now he runs a, like a uh, co-founder of the Best One podcast. I don't know. We've talked a little bit of time, but you can see he left his job in April. I didn't know that because I've been asking him questions for a while about Robin Hood. Um, but you know, his company got acquired by Robin Hood. He, he'd, he'd been working with them for a while and uh, you know, maybe it's because of cost cutting or maybe he just quit. Now he's running this operation. So he doesn't give me any uh, guides into what's happening with... Um, with uh with robin hood anymore which sucks because i like to have my contacts in the, in the industry okay and i was just talking to you guys about how i was hoping we wouldn't have some volatility at least just up to twenty we we're almost there guys we're about 100 basis points away i like being a little bit correct here so we're just watching some of these pop up happen see some of these pops happen we got ethereum doing something similar just not as much as bitcoin because bitcoin's lacking everything else right now right Ethereum Classic not doing as much. Dogecoin trying to move up a little bit more. I can get rid of this little thing. We're just looking at it as, as a zone of uh, resistance. ADA still popping up. Solana. Matic not doing anything great, but you know, Matic's, Matic has been doing great things overall. We can't slam that, right? XRP. You know, XRP to me, I know it's already kind of had a pop. This is something I feel is still primed to go parabolic even during a bear market just because everybody is waiting for this accursed uh, trial to be over where we can all hope for some clarity on what the heck the SEC cons considers a security. They've been all over the place. The, the management of the SEC has been horrible. Um, and, you know, when this trial is over, I'm pretty confident that uh, XRP will win and that'll give a big boost. Like I'm talking about like a boost up to like 75 cents, like a massive boost for XRP. So if there was anything I was like gearing up for maybe a, like a more of a longer term swing instead of a, like a dollar cost averaging, it would be XRP right now. But I know not everybody has access to buy XRP. And if you're wondering how you can buy it, um, just go over to coinmarketcap.com, go to XRP's um, page, and then scroll down to the market and you can see the, the markets for it right now. Okay, let me go back over to Bitcoin though, because I do like to see a bit of a pop. And Ethereum's having a little bit of issues, I think, just because of that, that moving average here. There we go. All right. A little bit of a pop. Let's see if we can stay above it. But look at this, guys. He managed to break out. I really want to see this continue to surge up here right now, everybody. Just, I want to see a nice surge. We'll watch on the minute chart here. A little bit more dramatic, I would say. We just want to see this thing continue to pop up. But uh, as far as Robinhood, I don't know. They, they're not as, they're not working as hard as I would like them to. But I'm hoping they can. And there's Bitcoin moving up a little bit more. Come on, let's. We need to. We need more action than this. Uh, let's see right here. 
And hey Puma, do you think this pump is temporary? Seems like the, on the weekly Bitcoin out of the downtrend, it was still it, it was in still leading though. Uh, still leading though. So what are your thoughts on the next few weeks? So normally we run up into CPI data. So this is just part of that run up, I believe. We had decent economic news come out today. We had about two hundred like thirty thousand jobs added into the market. It wasn't um, incredibly um, incredibly good or bad. Um, people are still trying to figure out what Jerome Powell meant by all the talking he did yesterday or a couple days ago. Um, there is Bitcoin. Thank you. I've been hoping for a big move to happen eventually. Um, if you want to buy right now, like anybody out there, just be and you want to hold for a little bit of time, I would say just be cautious of that CPI data. Because going back to your question, Puma, we normally run up into CPI data. And then if the CPI data is good, less than expectations, we should have a nice big boom coming out of that uh, that, that uh, announcement. If it's not good, we're coming back down below $20,000, not crashing down like 18,000, 17,000, 600, not like that. But we are gonna be in a little bit of a, a rough spot because all the longs in here are just gonna get demolished, right? I um, mean, you can even see right now after Bitcoin broke out today, we're still gathering on that, uh, uh, you know, uh, following that strength up. And we're still making some good moves, breaking out above this relative high right here, still trying to churn. And we're just trying to make our way back up bit by bit here. And that's okay. I'm in no hurry to get up there, guys. Um, right? Um, no hurry at all. And hey, this guy, I hope you're doing well. Let's see right here. And hey, Bideford, I'm really excited about the course as well here. Um, it's going to be long and it's going to be a lot of different information out there, but I think you guys will get a, a good amount of uh, information from it. It's just going to be very long, like 50 hours worth of information for you guys. 50 hours. Come on. There's a wall up here, which is annoying, but my, my personal target, I just showed you guys a few minutes ago. My personal target is just for it to get up to 21,500. That, that shouldn't be too hard for it to do, um, but we're getting closer and closer. Bitcoin is trying to have a little bit of a surge here right now see and hey sorry i haven't had an uh, update from bitget they're still saying you would have to go through a, a vpn or um if you're new you you can't do the kyc but if you already did kyc you should be okay at this point it's up to you to determine if you just want to move the money over to kucoin or another place uh or another exchange but i don't think they're going to have a fix for it anytime soon at least from like the language i've been hearing from them um, I've been trying to get a clear answer. I haven't been able to get a clear answer. So I don't think uh, they're going to give you like um, what you're looking for in the next few days. I don't think it's going to come. It's going to come that fast because um, whenever I see problems like this, it usually means they have to go through some type of regulatory body to get it fixed up. And I don't know if you know anything about American regulatory bodies. They're very, very, very slow by design, by design. And hey, GT, I appreciate that a lot very, very much. And uh, let me know if you have any questions as well. I did not buy Powerball tickets today at all. Uh, I don't really do lotteries too much. If I went to the gas station, I might have bought one for fun, but I haven't. And hey, Ken, Rice Bowl. I love the good old Rice Bowls here. I love the good old Rice Bowls. You can see Matic right now also kind of going a little bit sideways. Uh, Matic is just running up against a Fibonacci extension tool here. So, right. We're just testing it out. We're going to see if we can break above it. Usually we want to break above it on the four hour chart. Did we do that? No, we're testing it out right now. Yeah, so we're still looking pretty strong as far as Matic is, is, is concerned here, excuse me. Um, careful if you want to buy into it, it's already kind of popped off a little bit. You're kind of going for the scraps here, but usually when you're talking about the scraps of Matic, they are still pretty reliable chunks of meat, <laughs> right? Um, so be careful with it, you know, be careful with Matic. A lot of other stuff hasn't popped while Matic has, but if you guys like Matic and you guys are accustomed to trading it during these volatile times, definitely give it a shot. It looks like it could be some fun here. And I'm just waiting for freaking Bitcoin to hit 25, uh, 21,500. That's all I want to see tonight, guys. That's all I want to see. We're looking pretty good here. Let's see, your chicken pot pie sounds good. Uh, CPI is Thursday morning, uh, 5.30 a.m. Pacific time, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'll be live. Oh, I'm wake up early then. I'm probably not going to stream Thursday night, but I'll probably be live. Um, 
let's aim for four o'clock that means i'll probably go live around 4 30. um i would say let's let's aim for to me for me to be live at four o'clock in the morning pacific time um which is about like what is that seven o'clock eastern time um I'll, I'll try to be live there and then the announcement will come at 8 30 eastern time 5 30 a.m uh, pacific time so that'll be a good hour and a half before cpi data comes out we'll have a good understanding of what's going on i'll play cnbc we can see uh what the data is and you guys will be able to see the market in real time just like we did the other day whether it's crashing or booming we'll have a good idea of how bad or how good that cpi number is let's hope it's good i'd like to see a market rally here going into the end of the year um but if that inflation data is bad that just means we're going to have more rate hikes going into next year and remember guys this is lagging 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 effects with the rate hikes so we haven't really felt uh felt uh too much of those lag those uh those lags those rate hikes excuse me Hey, that's great, Bideford. That's perfect. And uh, if you ever have any questions, Bideford, as well, you can always ask me on uh, Discord as well. Uh, and hey, Alec. Uh, hey, Alec. Mike straight up predicted that pop. I just told you guys a few minutes ago that I have like, there's like ADHD. And there's like what I have is like really bad ADHD. I don't really open up about it that much because it like just makes me seem weird. Uh, but yeah, I do have really bad ADHD. And one of those things that I've learned to kind of use it to my benefit is for trading and kind of just understanding the setups and patterns that we're looking for. And right now, primarily because I am building at that course and I'm trying to like, you know, chapter one, two, three chapters, I guess I would say now, but you know, I'm really building out the entire ecosystem of this entire tutorial. I've been looking at charts a lot to figure out what charts I could use and uh, examples for you guys. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm good at predicting these little pops. Uh, remember guys, even just a few days ago, we talked about this, uh, this little bit of a rally that could be coming. I don't know which chart I was using. Um, this thing, right now, I guess it's kind of weird that the, the line starts over here, but I drew it last week, right? Um, hoping for a little bit of a pop, then a drop. Let's hope this part I'm really wrong about. Let's hope <laughs> I would love to see this continue to move up a little bit higher. Um, you know, break out above this level of resistance right here, which would be the 200 weekly moving average and the $25,000 level, then start moving back up here towards $28,000, $30,000. I would love to see that. Uh, I just don't know what the CPI number is. If the CPI number is good, we could really start ripping up a little bit higher. But if the CPI number is bad, this kind of might, this is what I think it might happen. We may be coming back down, right? Uh, let's go back over here, though. Uh, Coinbase, YouTube, Bitcoin, there we go. But yeah, if you stare at charts long enough, you too can be a, <laughs> a mindless trading zombie. Um, although that zombiness kind of helps you make money. Um, it's kind of that gut feeling you get, I would say. Because normally if I was to trade something like that, you see that little bit of a, let me go to the five minute chart here. I guess what, what's a relative trading uh, style right here. This is five minute. All right. So I would have done something like this. We broke out above it. We broke about out, out above it right here sometime in the day. Normally we start off the day with a little bit of a wick. So you might buy the dip of a wick thinking long term here, like different chart values. But you might just buy at the beginning of the day just to say, hey, what's going on? Resistance right there. You could scale out 20%, scale out 30 to 50% here. And you would keep a little bit more hoping for that one target level up here on 21,625 to kind of hedge my bets here because I don't want to be I don't want to be wrong while I'm streaming. I would cut that down a little bit to say 21,500 right here to kind of cover my butt, so to speak. Um, but that's just because I wanted it to happen while I was streaming. Um, but yeah, my brain kind of goes into overdrive, but articulating those thoughts besides just saying 21,500, it's uh, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty difficult for my brain to kind of talk about that or just articulate those thoughts here. But we haven't reached 21,500 yet. I'm hoping we do though. Open up a crypto hedge fund. I would love that. Uh, if, if I had the, like the ability and like the, the knowledge to open up a hedge fund, I would definitely do that for you guys. And it, you know, it'd be fully transparent of like how much, uh, all the, uh, how much money is being allocated to cer certain sectors. Um, you know, most of it would probably be going to Bitcoin and Ethereum, but then I'd probably go, I'd put a big chunk of it into speculative, speculative coin to see how they would do. Um, I wish I had the ability to do that. That just seems like so much work and I just don't know how to do it. I'm not that knowledgeable about, <laughs> about those uh, those products presented by Wall Street. Uh, uh, Loki says hi, everybody. 
It's Friday, then it's Saturday. Sunday, what? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, hey, GT, burrito bowl, brown rice, pinto beans, chicken queso, liquid cheese on top, hot sauce, corn, sour cream, more cheese, and the best guacamole ever, all for the low price of $15. <laughs> what do you call it? I think my sister got something like that the other day from Chipotle. And they buy it for, oh, there you go. I saw that already. Um, what's right here? Right here. Let's see. And hey, okay. Will there be any news today? I mean, you can never predict major news coming out. But so far, a lot of the news that's been fueling what we've been seeing in the crypto markets here has really been about Elon Musk and Dogecoin. It kind of started off with uh, Elon Musk and Twitter, excuse me. It really started off with Elon finally acquiring Twitter. And then on top of that, you saw Dogecoin start to spike off of the news. And then the entire market really started to pop off here and got people really excited about just uh, a potential a potential bear market rally, if you will. One of the things that I've been kind of excited about is over the past few weeks, we've started to see Bitcoin and digital assets, cryptocurrencies, really start to decouple a little bit from the stock market and you know most of almost all of my technical analysis that i talk about with you guys about bitcoin as far as long-term forecasts as far as like how bad things can get in 2023 as we head into this more serious recession europe gets in more trouble america gets in more layoffs stuff like that a lot of that has to do with the fact that the bitcoin likes to fall whether you guys think it's like the s p 500 or the uh, nasdaq bitcoin likes to follow these things and so, you know, that's the way I've kind of built my model out for Bitcoin. One thing that I would love to be wrong about, I don't know if I am, I don't think I am, but I would love to be wrong about, is the fact that there's a chance that over the next few months, while the stock market is going through some really nasty times, just some really ugly times out there, but you know, bad earnings reports, stuff like that, we could see Bitcoin actually decouple from the, the, the stock market and just start at least going a little bit more sideways or a little bit more up Meanwhile, everything else is crashing and burning. I would love to see the powers that be, the wealthy whales, even retail investors, keep it kind of going sideways. That way, for the next decade or so, when we're kind of in another prosperous cycle, we could say that, hey, remember when the whole market was really crashing and Bitcoin really stayed its ground? Bitcoin was a great asset to hold. And then it'll kind of bring a lot of those old timers on, or not even old timers, just people that don't know much about cryptocurrencies, that make them feel that maybe crypto was just a little bit more safer than they thought. And even though they thought, you know, Bitcoin would be going down to 15,000, 10,000, whatever, if the stock market decides to crash, Bitcoin only managed to go down to $21,000, $17,000, to even when the stock market was continuing to go down and down and down. Th that, you know, I think long term about this type of stuff, uh, the majority of the time, and that's one of the things I would really like to see myself be wrong about. I just don't know if it's going to happen, but I would love to see the decoupling. I need to learn more about what would actually cause that decoupling from digital assets, digital you know, cryptocurrencies, from the uh, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and what we see going on around in economies around the world. Uh, we, we managed to get back up here towards 21,400, but we're still having this issue here. Uh, I guess maybe we have a couple more minutes to pop. I don't, I don't want to wait for the 20 moving average on the five minute chart. I want to see this go, but uh, we have to have some volume for that one. How's volume working out for us right now? It builds up a little bit. We're still not down to where we were before, but it's okay. Ah, there you go. We can watch that happen right there. There we go. Yeah, no worries, Chihuahua. I like the name, my man. Um, and hey, Alan, I'm happy to see you back, my man. Uh, what's right here? I have a scale out point on 1.5 on Matic, but probably not going to make it that high. Hey, you never know. Matic has been kind of popping off quite a bit. And right now, what is Matic at? You know, 124? I mean... If it doesn't hit, you just kind of revert back to your next scale out point, right? You just go back down a level and you're, you're going to be fine. Um, I really hope Matic does do some really impressive things here, even if the run up is only going up until like the election on Tuesday or maybe the uh, CPI numbers on Thursday. Even if we only have a short run up here, this is still a lot of opportunities for you guys to make some money, which I'm excited about. Uh, and hey, Ghost, happy to see you back. Is Doge slowing because of Matic? No, Dogecoin is slowing just because it's already pumped up a, a, a large amount here. Coins just don't continue to pop and pop and pop and pop like that normally. Dogecoin is an aberration. Matic is an aberration at this point. But a, the majority of the time, guys, 
it's okay to see a coin pop up like you know dogecoin only went up already went up like a hundred percent and just sit there and just relax and just cool off a little bit because normally the longer a coin consolidates the larger the breakout dogecoin had been consolidating for a long time which is why we had such a nice nice breakout matic has been consolidating for a while and now it's just having that nice breakout itself they each need to give themselves a little bit of a cool down period here um don't don't be mad or upset if a coin just kind of cools off a little bit like right now um everything is up on my chart except for maybe xrp and luna c but luna luna classic you know kind of had a good day yesterday um but doge is still up about 0.78 percent it was at 15 cents a few days ago now it's in at 12. typically when dogecoin pops it really decides to dump back down so you know i think we should be happy to see dogecoin is not already back down below 10 cents honestly i like where dogecoin is at, at this point in time and hey kenny g dot i like dot as a long-term hold i have it in my um offline wallet now i used to have all of it on voyager because voyager had a very good interest rate system on it but you guys know when i was telling people to kind of it might be better uh better safe than not or whatever it was um better safe than sorry to move all your money off of voyager um i kind of just moved all of my dot off of voyager i sold it all I actually had to pay taxes on it sold it all uh and then just bought more more of it on uh, i think it was bitgit or uh kucoin and, and then i just basically moved it over to a wallet um but yeah i like it a lot for a long-term hold they have a lot of good staking programs like most platforms have a good staking program with uh polka dot for some reason um what's right here and hey alex just curious am i invested in meta yes i am i'm betting on the metaverse i like so far this year over the past I mean, it's not really even this year just out, after the crash i would say after the crash we saw a few days ago i probably tossed in like 2000 2100 bucks or something like that in meta um it's, you know a decent amount um i'm dollar cost averaging like 500 bucks a month into it right now um I, I really believe Facebook will be just fine in the long run personally. Um, but when I buy now, I'm not selling for like four or five years. So um, just understand that there could be a lot more pain as far as Meta is concerned. Um, one of the reasons I jumped into Meta was primarily because of the major crash we saw after that earnings report. It, the big thing about it was the earnings report wasn't actually terrible. The thing about meta we'll come back to bitcoin here in a second uh the thing about meta was um where be my meta meta oh it's still at facebook for some reason okay um there you go yeah when we had that huge collapse right here <laughs> right the reason i started buying down here which I'm already at a loss on this position. I think I have an average of 95 bucks. It's like at 90, $90 right now. Um, you know, just, uh, uh, let me go back to what I was saying. Um, the reason why um, it dropped wasn't necessarily because of the bad earnings report. It was the fact that they were still continuing to spend loads of money on the metaverse. That's what really like really hit everybody hard. They thought they were gonna stop spending as much money on the metaverse and kind of slow it down as they understood that everybody was heading for a recession. 2023 is supposed to suck. All the companies are officially saying it now. Um, and I'm looking at Meta being this low, right? I got 90 bucks. I mean, it might go down as low as uh, 70, 60 bucks if things get really, really out of hand. I'm still gonna be buying because I think in the long run, it's just gonna be like a one big peak like this, a one big drop like this. I think we'll be okay. Um, I think they'll find a way to make some good money here. But um, like, from the all-time highs of Facebook, right? Ever since we talked about that breakdown, like way over here, that, that original breakdown. Uh, I thought we might've broken down right here. We said, said we broke out. That original breakdown, Meta's down about like 75%, <laughs> right? So like, I, I couldn't help myself, but at least try to buy some up right here. And then I'll see what happens as far as maybe we have a rally for Meta sometime going into the end of the year. But I mean, if we kind of talk about this very fast, let me just get out of this for just a second. Bitcoin is only down 
Facebook has gone down more in value than Bitcoin has. The media doesn't like to talk about those similarities, but they're there, <laughs> right? Um, so I, I, I'm just saying, you know, uh, whenever anybody tries to make fun of cryptocurrencies and stuff like that, saying, oh, it's too volatile, just say that, hey, you know, this year, you know, uh, Facebook has lost more value than Bitcoin. And they'll be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. but you, you can pull out those little fun facts to kind of poke them at, poke at, uh, poke at them. Oh man, but yeah, you know, it. I couldn't help myself but buy some. I, I really couldn't. I like Meta as a company long term. I think it's fantastic. Um, but they are just pouring a lot of money. But yeah, I own a lot of Meta, and I'm gonna continue to buy a lot of Meta. I want to buy more Apple, but Apple is too overvalued right now. I'd want to see Apple crash more. I want to buy Tesla under like a hundred and seventy-five dollars. I wanna, I I want to be very greedy at this point in time. Um. Uh, you know, before I really start dollar cost averaging, uh, I'm, and I'm putting a lot of faith in myself to figure out the best time to buy. Um, so, you know, I could be wrong about this, but you know, um, this is my first ever bear market as an investor, right? This is my ever first big bear market recession play where I'm trying to time the bottom, not like, you know, try to catch the falling knife on the exact day, but try to know when to buy some of these larger dips, dollar cost averaging. So this is my first one. Remember guys, in 2008, hold on, let me see if I can find this. Um, how old was I in 2008? Let's find this out. My date of birth is 09, 29, 1994. And let's just go to a five November. I think the market really crashed in the summer, maybe July and 2008. I was 13 years old, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's been a hot minute since, uh, you know, Americans in general were actually um, in this spot. So this is my first attempt at trying to make the most of this bear market as I can. And I understand maybe I'm, I, I'm starting to buy too early when it comes to meta or some of these other assets out there. But, you know, I have so much more time in my life that I can be willing to get wrong and understand that down the road, we're eventually gonna be chugging back up there. I tried to do something of a test run on this theory that I'm working out, kind of with how I did uh, Boeing. Um, so some of you guys know, I talked about a little bit, uh, mostly when I, my channel first started off here. Uh, I've been holding Boeing for a long time, like a long time. Um, and, and the reason for that is my whole family has worked for Boeing and I'm talking about great grandparents, the, the sisters and brothers of great grandparents, uh, grandparents, the sisters and brothers of grandparents, uncles and aunts, mom, dad, um, they've all worked for Boeing. I was the first person to say no to working for Boeing in like four generations, great grandparents, grandparents, parents. Yeah. Me, I'm fourth generation. Yeah. Fourth generation to say, no, I don't want to go work for Boeing. And it, it was kind of weird. However, um, I kind of know Boeing quite a bit. I've been holding their stock since like literally all the way over here since the COVID drop. I was dollar cost averaging the entire way back up. My average right now is like $132 or something like that. We're only at 160, so it's up a little bit, but you know, uh, it's like, I, I know that I might not, I know that it might come back down more. However, long term i can see boeing going back up here towards 300 400 and that's why i'm probably going to sell my boeing off and then on top of that um boeing disabled its dividends when covid hit uh because of you know there's bad bad management let's be honest with you, all the planes are freaking falling apart um now you know whenever they do reinstate those dividends down the road I think that's going to be a great opportunity for the stock to move up even higher and make more money and make me even more money. But you know, buying Boeing down here at $135, you had an opportunity to buy at $116, $117, $114 over here. I just see that as like, wow, this is really low. And relative to what it's been doing, you know, most of its life, um, I think in the long run, we might be in a kind of a bad spot like this or this or this, whatever. In the long run, 
I could see Boeing doing fairly well. So it's really long-term planning here when I'm buying Meta. I don't want, any, want anybody to think I'm buying a Meta hoping that like tomorrow it's gonna run up like a thousand percent or so, <laughs> something like that, right? Um, but yeah, that, that's that, that's what I'm looking at right now. You can see Bitcoin right now, guys, just had a double a top top neckline break. It might bounce back up a little bit before. Yeah, there's a little bit of a bounce. But um, what do you call it? Uh, Meta is an interesting play. I would really say dollar cost averaging is probably the safest thing you can do for it. <laughs> probably the safest thing you can do with it. Um, but yeah, just like you, I, I did buy some shares on this dip. Uh, but it kept dropping. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Alex, long-term plays, I think it is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic for long-term holds. I don't, I just, I, I hope at the end of the day, what they make is something very practical that a lot of people can get behind. What I do like about them is they're trying to patch it or make it work with their, uh, their VR headsets. So that's what I really like about it. There's a lot of companies out there making metaverse products and just gaming products. Um, I like the idea of actually feeling like you're somewhere else, not just by looking at a computer monitor or something like that, but actually feel like, whoa, I'm out here doing something really fun with my friends, uh, yada, 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 right? Um, now they are gonna have competition, but I feel like Facebook is positioned to make a lot of money off of it. If they can succeed, I'm betting that they will succeed. I'm betting, it's a gamble at this point, right? But I am betting that they will succeed here. Anyway, hey, Bideford, you know we've got a major build of meta buildings here in our neck of the woods and street talk is if they can get meta off the ground, they'll divide it, Facebook off and then you'll see meta fly. What do you call, I, I could actually see that happening right now, especially if it manages to take off. Uh, partly because I, I think over the next like 20, 30 years, you're gonna see the government start to um, try to break up a little bit of these companies. So you can see Amazon as a massive company that owns like Whole Foods, a whole bunch of other stuff. I, I, I think the governments over the next couple decades are gonna to try to crack down on that a little bit more. Just like they're, they're probably gonna start cracking down on Apple because of the Apple tax that everybody has to use if you wanna have an app on Apple. Um, I was talking about this with a friend the other day. Um, you guys know that when Apple, um, if you guys ever uh, buy something, like let's say you guys have an app and you're buying a service on the app, let's say that service costs a dollar, you know, Apple's taking 20% of that and then the developer gets the rest, right? But when it comes to influencers and stuff like, that, like YouTube, YouTube uh, Apple takes 20% of it, YouTube takes 30% of it, and I'm left with about 50% of it. Right, so um, Apple's eventually gonna get hit with that, and I think they're gonna have to stop that practice. Um, you know, people it's starting to give uh, people the bad, a wrong idea <laughs> about them. Um, but what do you call um, needs to fire Zuckerberg's? I don't know if he can. I think I think the company is structured to so he has all the control. Like I, I think that's the way the company is actually structured right there. So I don't think people are gonna be able to come at uh, Zuckerberg and say, hey, you have to stop this. I don't think the way the shares are built allows us to have enough voting power to challenge him, um, which I think is very good for him and for his project. But man, shareholders are not happy. Remember guys, it's down more than Bitcoin. That's absolutely insane. That is absolutely insane. Let's take a little bit of a minute here. Bitcoin's coming back down just a little bit here, probably gearing up to take another move. We'll have to wait and see, but Ethereum doing the same thing here. The heck? Oh, let me go to chart. There you go. Chart, chart, chart. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ethereum doing fine. Still trying to hold above the Fibonacci extension level. Ethereum Classic still moving okay. Let's go to maybe the 15 minute chart. There you go. Still moving up. Dogecoin still moving up. Everything for the most part, guys, is just still gradually moving up after a little bit of a dip we saw a couple days ago. ADA definitely moving up here, bouncing off of those support levels. Looks really nice. ADA, uh, just watch out for this breakdown, but this is a pretty solid move up right now. I would only buy it if we were closer to this support level though. STMX, ooh, STMX is starting to gain some steam here as well. Huh. Uh, I always watch this one because you guys know it has it does those pops and I'm, I always want to sell one of these larger pops. Pop, pop, pop. I was hoping we might have a pop here the other day, but it didn't come to fruition. 
I'm hoping we can like make our way back up to like 10 cents or see me a penny again. Oh gosh, that'd be a good, what would that profit be right now? You know, like 45% profit. And my average is like really low because I kept on buying, selling up here and buying back lower. Um, I, I want to see STMX have a really good day. Today. I think it can. Um, but that's more of a day trading coin for a lot of you guys. I don't know if a lot of you guys have actually tried to do long-term positions on it. You can see the current resistance level right there. Let's just pop up above it. Somebody's trying to push us down, but we have the, I think we can pop up a little bit more. Soul is doing fine. Matic, we talked about this. Matic is just running up against the Fibonacci extension level here, trying to make that next step up. Getting rejected, but that's fine. Matic has moved up a lot over the past few hours. It's okay if it takes a little bit of a rest. Pop, drop, I mean, drop, drop, right? Drop, drop. It's okay. Uh, just like with uh, Dogecoin, when it has a really big pop, it tends to come down a little bit faster. Those on Mars not doing a whole bunch of anything. However, uh, for those of you guys like to trade this, I think some of you guys told me this other day, uh, as far as you guys like to trade this. Consolidation pattern. Let's hope it can break out. Um, we're kind of just going sideways here, so I kind of hope we can break out. But, you know, if you guys are looking for an actual like pattern trade, this is going to be a classic one for you guys to use. XRP already popped up earlier. Still moving okay. But besides that, guys, not much is going on. Oh, Engine and Coin, I guess. Let me see this. Yeah, 4% so far. Engine and Coin is actually running up here. Let's go to the hour chart. Breaking above that resistance level over here and trying to make that next move up probably to 51 cents or so. A little small move, but still looking pretty good. Litecoin, still, for, you know, we're still in this nice uptrend, everybody. That's what you guys got to understand. Uptrend. Apecoin, maybe not as nice as other coins, but still doing okay. She going more sideways. It did break out, which was kind of sucked because it broke out. And it didn't really do much, right? Broke out, popped up, and now it's just consolidating. You'd probably want to see that breakout continue here over the next few days. Mana just broke out here. We haven't talked about this one yet, but oh, this is this is this isn't a breakout. What the heck is this from? Oh, this is from an old old time ago. Jeez, yeah, this is from a while ago. Oh, I forgot we're on a different chart system here. I keep on forgetting that. I don't want to mess up the 24 hour stream. Yeah, because that was a breakdown. That was a false breakdown. Yeah, mana has a lot of weird things. I don't like to trade mana too often. Oh, let's go over here, though. We're lower here. Okay. Let's go to the four hour chart. Let's find that relative low right there, I'm assuming. 58.25. Yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, back up here. Pop this up. Five. Some resistance, some resistance, a little bit of resistance, no resistance, no resistance. Okay, well, this should be okay then. Yeah, so mana might be something you guys might want to look at, at least until it gets back up here towards 75, but that's more of a scrapping right there. Uh, oh, we had a golden cross in the one hour. Yeah, okay. FTM still looking okay. Oh, AXS is ripping right now, guys, as well. Let's go to the five. Yeah, this one's ripping. It's kind of just hopping on something that's kind of moving up pretty fast right now, guys, and just playing the game here. There you go. AXS seems to be doing pretty nice, just breaking out now. Anything else moving up quite a bit? Sand is moving up quite a bit here, more of a gradual climb. But AXS is up about 13% in the last hour and 15 minutes. That's pretty good. And hey, Mr. Peppin, happy to see you back, man. Hope you're doing very well. What's right here? How overbought does Matic look to you right now? It's pretty darn overbought. I mean, it's pretty darn overbought. However, if Bitcoin tries to make a run, Matic will follow it. It, it's just more that right now when you uh, it, it kind of depends on how you approach trading okay so the way i approach trading is i i trade about uh usually five different coins i trade those coins and only those coins i have all these coins on my list because a lot of you guys like to look at them and you guys tr trade these coins but primarily for me you know the way i look at matic right now it's moved up so much that it's too risky for me to want to buy the pop. I would have bought Matic on a breakout or a zone low instead of trying to buy now after the breakouts occurred, right? So when I'm looking for things that I could possibly trade right now, the things that I am looking to trade are more of, um, let me just kind of go through the list here. We can start off with Ethereum. We gotta find a theme here. Um, daily chart. Ethereum is something I want to be longing right now because I think Ethereum can I, I wake up in the morning and we'd be blasting above the 200 daily moving average 
and that's what I'd be hoping for. Don't know what it, what would happen after that, but I wouldn't care because I'd be selling this by tomorrow. Um, so, you know, I'd want to be longing Ethereum, breaking out above that 200 daily moving average after we just broke out above that uh, Fibonacci extension level here. Uh, Bitcoin as well just broke out above the Fibonacci extension. And as well as that, we managed to break above and close above, um, or almost, we're about to close above it maybe Sunday, um, the 20 week moving average here, okay? Now, other things out there right now, Ethereum Classic running up into some resistance up here, maybe around 27 bucks. That could be interesting. That's only about like two bucks away from a dollar and a half, two bucks away from where we are now. Um, I think we could actually wake up all the way to 29 bucks though. Um, Dogecoin already broke out. I don't want to play with this because it already broke out. It already had a big move. You can buy at the zone low, the support level, a whole bunch of opportunities there. ADA. Not even close to support right now. I'd like to buy it right there. But the zone to buy it in was like, uh, I, don't, I don't even know. This one was kind of wonky. I wouldn't even bought this one actually. But you could have bought it if you wanted to buy it over the last few days or the last few hours. It would have been down here. Only reason I don't want to buy ADA personally uh, is because it broke down to new lows, which I did not think was going to happen. A lot of these higher market cap coins I thought were a little bit stronger than some of the lower market cap ones that were just kind of falling off a cliff. ADA, it is, this is like the weakest of all the large cap coins, if you ask me. Um, STMX, we don't got to worry about that one, but you know, uh, this has big pops. It's known for just ripping and you just sell during these massive rips. Um, and these rips aren't small, like within one day, this is a four hour chart, but just within one day here, 98%, one day here, 48%, one day here, you know, 50%. You usually want to sell on those rips right there, but you usually just entail you not doing buying and then just adding an alert and just waiting. So it's not like you're just watching the charts. You're just waiting for the alert on your phone or something like that to kick off. Um, those AXS continue to go off here as well. There we go. All right. But it seems pretty overbought, right? Um, you could buy it. You could probably see it even go up even more, but the risk just seems too high at that point for me. It's more of a risk than a reward type of thing. Um, many rounding bottom roller coasters back up a lot and it's really primarily because the bitcoin which is really really nice right now we managed to break back out above that 20 week moving average bitcoin hasn't been above that 20 week moving average before i think it was like the march or april crash um we broke above it for a little bit of time you saw a lot of youtubers out there um talking about the bull market support support band benjamin's one of them um he's a really good guy um he uses the 20 week moving average as the level to say if Bitcoin is in a bull or bear market. So that week that we got above it, he was talking about how we were back into a bull market. It turned out the entire thing was just one gigantic manufactured trap. And it was a disaster because you guys all know we just like we crashed and crashed and crashed and crashed and burned. Um, but like, it fooled so many people. It even fooled me. I even bought some on the long there because I was like, OK, we're moving up a little bit. And I was doubting my own theory of the death cross of the 20 week moving average cross, crossing down below the 50 week moving average, right? So I still had my shorts in there, but I, I added some longs on there too, just a little bit of a hedge. And that ended up just being wasted money on the hedge side, <laughs> on the hedge side things, right? Oh man. But yeah, those were some crazy days. But yeah, the 20 week moving average is something we managed to break out above. Let's hope that it's not going to be a huge fake out this time. The only way I could really see it being a massive effect now since we did manage to break out above it would be if we run into the election and elections probably not going to have too much of an impact on the market. But when the CPI data comes out next, next Thursday, if if it's not too good, you know, uh, you know that that's where we start uh, blowing up and everything goes flying. Uh, not going to be a good time. Uh, let's see. Hey, Alex. Thanks, Michael, for your info. Looking forward to these videos you got coming out. Catch you later. Have a great rest of your night, my man. Um, sort of market change, how to trade this pops or understand. Um, well, right now, it's probably the time to be day trading if you weren't buying at support levels. Um, if you want to day trade, I would recommend you learn about patterns and breakouts and breakdowns. That way, you know how to long and short. Since you're kind of new to trading, I'd probably say the best thing you could do is stick to paper trading for right now. Because this is going to be a volatile market. If you want like the easy answer, uh, a lot of people are going to be buying up 
this market over the next few hours and hoping that Bitcoin can really blast out above some of these resistance levels and that Ethereum as well will blast out above its 200 daily moving average. So if you want something easy to buy, I think most people are going to be buying Ethereum hoping that we can break out above that 200 daily moving average. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but that's probably like the easiest place you could park your money and just hope that we can continue to go up from here, okay? Um, have a stop loss in place, have a trading plan in place. Whatever I just told you as far as like, you know, hope for 2000 bucks or whatever Ethereum, you have to have a plan and that plan has to be written out or typed up most likely. Um, so you know when to sell, whether it goes up or if we go down, okay? You don't, you wanna minimize your losses while maximizing your profits here. Um, what's right here? Um, what's there, there we go. Okay, let me see what's going on over here. So we still got AXS running up. It's like up 16% in the last uh, hour and a half. So that's moving up pretty well. Uh, let me go over here to coin market cap. Last hour, there we go. AXS, there we go, up 13%. It'll be up a little bit more here in a second. Sandbox is up a little bit. Flow is up, Mean is a little bit. Not much is actually up right now, it looks like. The majority of stuff is just uh, breaking even or maybe even down a little bit, but I'd probably say most stuff is just, uh, just like up one to 2%. I'll go down here a little bit. Yeah, this is page one of coin market cap, so not really, you know, larger market caps, but half a percent. That Kronos is only up about half a percent or a little over half a percent for the last hour or so. You got some stuff over here up a bit down up a percent eCash up a percent and a half binary x up a percent wrapped bitcoin is up 0.94 yeah zcash up about a percent um let me see you know how are the coins that have lost the most money over the past few days so ethereum uh pow that's down about 95 percent over the last 90 days uh, it's down to a 700 million dollar market cap. What happened to this bad boy? Like what happened to it? I mean, it's up a little bit today, but I uh, Hold on a second here What happened to this coin to make it lose all the value? Oh, all right. What well, doesn't matter? It's had a pretty rough time, though. Helium's down a little bit. Not as much today. AXS. Okay, that's down. Oh, okay. Uh, uh. At least AXS is looking pretty good. It's up almost 19% now for the last few hours or last few minutes. Engine coin is still up. I'll be watching Bitcoin and stuff like that to see if we can have a little bit of a pop. But right now, it seems like AXS is the thing to be trading right now. see and hey chris oh okay uh a lot of people sold after they were allowed oh okay so they, they couldn't sell until a certain point and all of a sudden everybody sold at once probably the smart thing to be doing in those times uh same thing if you guys get any coin out there probably best to just sell it the day you get it beat the market as fast as you can and hope that uh you beat everybody else selling it as well uh, let's go right there okay. moving some stuff around on my desk Yes, yeah, but they lost their almost year stick rewards. I mean, I can't blame them at this point looking at how bad the price fell down. There was probably a pure panic going on right there. Now let's get that one right there. Let's get that one right there. Uh, day trade, got that one. There you go. Let's go to five. Yeah, this thing is zooming, guys. I don't know if we have any um, hour charts. A little bit of resistance there. A little bit of resistance there. Only a tiny bit. Not much there, though. So what happens if I adjust this just a little bit? Doesn't matter. A little bit of support there. 
Let's leave it here first, just because the pink line is a little bit closer at this point. After we break above the pink line, I'll, I'll adjust it again. If we can break above the pink line, I guess. That level's kind of around 12 bucks or so, 11.98, I would say. All right, there we go. Ah, there we go, okay. GTC long printing too. Oh, there we go. I don't know if I have GTC on mine. I think I had it on a while ago, but I don't know. Like every once in a while, like I just delete stuff on here. GTC. Is that what you said? GTC. Yeah. Uh. uh there we go. GTC. It's only up a little bit. It looks like from here. Over the past few days, it's been doing pretty good. This is like the daily chart. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, Golden Cross just happened as well. Yeah, I'm making up because it, it fell down below the June lows. A lot of those coins that fell down below the June lows are pumping up a little bit more than everything else right now. Is that is did AXS do? Yeah, see, June lows, AXS is something similar. A lot of stuff that fell down below those June lows, they're just trying to make their way back up right now. They're a little oversold compared to a lot of other coins out there. Um, but you know, stuff like Matic, it never did. It's just Matic is just being ripping, 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 ripping. Uh, what's right here? There we go. Just trying to make that next big break out there. Team Burrito. I think burritos are great. Looks like the majority of you guys like tacos. Then it goes over to burritos, then nachos, then quesadillas. They're pretty good. I haven't had a good burrito in a minute though. I haven't had a good, I had nachos. I had nachos in Vegas. They are pretty good. I didn't have a burrito in Vegas though. That would have been really good to have. I had like fine dining in Vegas. Oh man. There we go. Good old steaks and whatnot. All right, let me see guys. Let me go back over here. Wow, Dogecoin is still the number one trending coin. That's pretty interesting. Uh, you got Casper and then you got Sheba over here as well. New coins that were added, I don't usually pay attention to those ones all too much. Well, let me go over here very fast. Take a look at the traditional market for today. We saw a lot of green guys. It looks, still looks like we're, the market still wants to have a little bit of a rebound here. Technology, computer hardware was up 7% overall. I mean, um, Anet was. A lot of other uh, companies up like maybe 4 or 5%. Not bad at all. Visa's up a little bit, MasterCard's up a little bit, PayPal's down, that's PayPal though. They're having issues with their marketing department. They gotta stop going after people for free speech. Um, oil, I don't know. I don't know how much more I'm gonna be talking about oil, guys. I've told you guys about oil enough. I don't need to, I don't need to like pump up the oil market myself. Um, but I have been happy with the profit so far. Um, for some of my trades that I have in the oil market, maybe I'll start to scale them out over the next few months. Devian came down a little bit over the past few days. I was kind of bummed about that. I thought we might break out above this top right here. Didn't really pan out. Um, but you got stuff like um, some of these smaller ones. They're still ripping off. So uh, I'm probably going to scale out of my non-dividend oil plays sometime in November or December, I would say. Uh, before the oil market starts to turn around a little bit here as the, inflate, the recession gets worse. But you got like Schlumberger. Still doing pretty well at that resistance level right now. Dividend is only like 1.32%. I wouldn't be mad about scaling out of that one. PXD, you know, Pioneer, I'm going to keep in that one, of course, like 15, 14% dividends. Let's see. Yeah. Nachos with lots of jalapenos. Oh, that sounds really, really good. I hope Dogecoin might hit 16K. Uh, I mean... That'd be a massive, massive market cap, but I'd be very happy if it did myself. And cheese sauce, that looks good. News about oil is very bullish. Well, yeah, I mean, remember guys, oil, there's only so much oil right now. Uh, my, my only fear about it right now is, um, is this. As we head into a recession or a worsening recession next year, we're gonna be uh, using less oil that there's not going to be as high of a demand and that lower demand should lower prices quite a bit and uh with any luck maybe they'll cut back on on production a little bit but by then i don't think the price of oil is going to really have a good chance of getting over 100 bucks so i think for my short-term oil plays 
I'm probably going to be scaled out before the end of December, before the end of December, and I'll probably start scaling out of some of them over the next few weeks here anywhere. Uh, but I, you guys know me, I've been talking about oil forever, ever, 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 ever. Um, you know, when, you, when you've been talking about it for so long and you buy it cheap, you can sell it whenever you want to and just be <laughs> happy about the, the profits here. All right, AXS is breaking down a little bit here. Did Bitcoin manage to make its way back up? Nah, Bitcoin just ended up going back over to consolidation levels. Yeah, we're looking to consolidate a little bit longer than have a breakout a little bit now for tonight. Governments are buying gold. Yeah, I don't, I haven't been happy with gold's performance. You would expect as the economy got worse, gold at prices would go back up. But gold really hasn't been doing anything great as of late. Uh, you know, like, let's go to the weekly chart. This is a weekly chart, guys. If you've been holding gold throughout this entire horrible year, you've been losing money. <laughs> losing money. Um, maybe now is a sign of a reversal. I, I don't know. We're about to have a death cross here pretty soon, but the death crosses usually don't mean too much as far as gold is concerned, right? Uh, maybe, if anything, the death cross means we're going up, right? Um, but yeah, I just... I was hoping for a lot more when it came to gold. We really didn't have any good strong moves with gold this year. I was really disappointed with it, especially since the economy was doing so poor. Um, but you never know. Uh, we may pick it back up a little bit. Maybe they're just looking for those good old standard economic um, indicators that say, hey, we're going to be in a recession, like a really bad recession. Maybe that's what really drives gold back up. But at this point, I'm just going to use the money to do some dollar cost averaging or whatnot. I'd be happy with that. Back over here to the five. There we go. Come on, Bitcoin. Have a rally here. Oh, and thanks, Pepper, and I appreciate it. I don't know why. Those tons and tons of spam on the sites these days. Even on my Telegram account, I'm getting tons and tons of spam these days. All right, there we go. So, let's see. Yeah, I just want to see Bitcoin actually have this one big pop up here. Like it's nine minutes. We have an opportunity, I guess, for it to happen now, but over the next nine minutes. But I really just want to see us have a surge. And what I'm basically saying is I want a whale to come in here and just buy up a bunch of Bitcoin, but it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, you know, I can hope, right? Let's see how much longer we can let this bad boy consolidate here. And hey, Pepin, I had gold for years. Markets drop gold, uh, dr uh, drop gold, drop with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was not happy with it at all. Uh, you're popular. I I know, guys. Freaking, I, I hate bots. I get so many bots. Because I'm an, uh, I am I run a business, such as an influencer, I get a lot of spam accounts just saying, hey, I get a whole bunch of ads, like a spam ads for you guys. Say, hey, can you promote my coin? But it's really just a spammer or a scammer. Um, I got a whole bunch of scam. It sucks. Like if I go to my Telegram account right now, I can't show it to you because I have like a lot of private conversations going on with businesses. Um, but you guys would just see a bunch of hello, 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 and all they say is hello with a picture and just a bot just saying hello to try to get me to sign up for some crap. Um, spam starting to ramp up now into the end of the year. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys this. Um, I know Loki. Loki's trying to get me to take him outside. Uh, <clears throat> what are your day trade coin list? It's going to be different for everybody, but five coins that I like to trade. Ugh, I mean, you got Bitcoin, Ethereum. Ethereum is my favorite. Ethereum is my favorite. Um, Ethereum Classic, Matic, and uh, sometimes I try to maneuver that last bit around, that last one. But I would say it's either, sh um, not sheep, it's either mana or sand. So, um, Ethereum number one, Matic number two, Ethereum Classic number three. Bitcoin number four and uh, mana or sand at number five. Those are probably coins that those are coins that um, I like to trade. I like to day trade. 80% of my trades are done through Ethereum. 80% of my trades are done through Ethereum. Uh, I will add on to that list every now and again, but it's it has to be because I see something that is so good that I just can't pass it up. Um, like Luna before it crashed. 
and I'm talking about before the bad news came out that crushed Luna down to pennies on the dollar. I'm talking about when Luna was like at $104. It was very overbought compared to the rest of the Bitcoin market, uh, crypto market. And it was just starting to break down. And I was like, oh, this is what I've been waiting for forever. Um, and, you know, and, and that's the only reason I really deviate from that list. But usually it's only about five coins. Um, when I put out my tutorials later on, one of the things I talk about in this video upcoming tomorrow is um, maybe next, maybe Sunday, depends on when I get the thumbnail back from the guy. Um, I talk about uh, finding your 20. So what that means is you guys are most likely going to find um, 15 stocks and five crypto coins, uh, cryptocurrencies. You want to become experts on trading. So that means like Apple, Tesla, whatever. It can be your 15. It can be your 10. It doesn't matter. You're, uh, hopefully not over 20 though. You're going to find up to 20 plays or up to 20 assets that you want to learn how to trade consistently profitably. Uh, consistently and be profitable while doing it let's see same crypto 99.9 percent .9%. yes only bought spam a lot of it a lot of it a lot of it yeah let's see and then peppin i'd low-key uh i'd low-key great pyrenees oh no loki is a uh loki is a um uh, german shepherd he's a german shepherd my friend's dad has a great a bunch of great Pyrenees. I don't know if I have it on Instagram or so. Let me see. Uh, I don't know if I can make it myself on Instagram. There we go. Is this me? That is not me. Uh. Oh, I think I think I have like. Insta. This is this is me. That's me. Okay, let's go over here. Well, let me. So that's look. You see, German Shepherd. I was at my friend's place in Vegas. Oh no, I won't. Let me show it to you guys. Okay, let me let me do this very fast. Uh, no, oh my phone's over on a charger. I'll show it to you another time. My friend's dad has like four massive Great Pyrenees white dogs. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, but uh, I haven't seen a Great Pyrenees dog in a while. Loki just a German Shepherd likes to be a little bit of a brat sometimes. Here, let me show you. Uh, yeah. How do I do this? There you go. You'll see him over here in a second. See. Sniffing up a storm. There you go. Good boy. Yep. There you go. No, no more tweets. Oh, there you go. But yeah, he's a pretty little guy. Oh, let's see right here. Hey, what highest trade I've earned and biggest loss? Oh, uh, probably the biggest gain I've ever had would be about $150,000, well, give or take. That was off of Luna last uh, few months ago. Um, that was more of an accidental trade because I, I shorted because of technicals and then bad news came out. Um, before that, my highest trade was maybe $70,000 or something like that. Um, that was a trade I did with you guys though. Like while, uh, while giving you guys the plays like that trade is somewhere on my community tab. Like, um, oops. Snap. Oh, wait, it worked out okay. Um, let me see if I can find it here. I, I used to have all the pictures, but I needed extra space on my computer. One terabyte is literally not enough. Um, my channel, community. Um, let's see. Wish I can go through these and just show pictures. Six months ago. Uh, nine months ago. Oh God, you guys remember COVID? I forgot we streamed during COVID. Uh, Loki. Uh, no, not that one. There's some winners. Some winners. I don't know. 
Winners, winner, losers. Uh, winner, winners, losers. I don't know if I can find it, honestly. It takes a while to go through all this old stuff. Um, I don't know. It, it was quite a bit of money. Was this an Apple? Oh, I don't want to click on it. Oh, I just clicked on it. Damn it. Now, if I go back, I have to start all over. Um, oh, this. I was on vacation during this time, so I was giving. Okay. But yeah. Um, what do you call? Um, biggest loss? Uh, somewhere close to like seven, ten thousand dollars. Seven thousand dollars. Yeah, close to seven thousand dollars. I mitigate my losses these days. Um, the problem with trying to like squeeze down your losses too much is that sometimes it makes it so you don't make as much money as you could. But I've kind of found a sweet spot where I'm making consistent profits, and at the same time, I'm not losing a bunch of money. That's kind of where my happy space is. Um, a lot of the big players on YouTube, they will lose like 50,000 bucks in a day, but they'll make it on some days like $250,000 in a day. I don't like to be that risky personally, um, but um, there are people that play that dangerous game. I'm not one of them. I just like to make my money and spend it on stuff I like. There you go. All right. We just got a great pair of news. We've always had goldens. I'm wondering if we have a mix. We would love to see the picks. Um, what do you call great Pyrenees is are beautiful, but the hair. Oh my gosh. Um, although my friend's great Pyrenees is, or his dad's great Pyrenees is they, um, they are, what do you call it? Um, they're like they're rescue dogs. So like they, they take, they take some time to warm up to people. Uh, it took them maybe about four or five hours to warm up to me because they had never met me before. Um, but like one of them won't even let me approach them if I'm standing up. But if I'm sitting down on a sofa, now she's comfortable enough to come up to me and let me pet her and just like sit down on, and, uh, on the sofa next to me and just put her head on me. But if I still, like, even with that level of like knowing me, if I walk up to her and I'm standing up and she's like just walking around the house, she like just starts barking like crazy, like, who are you? What do you want? Get away from me. Um, so they're all rescue dogs, but they're all really, really lovely. Uh, two are outside dogs that watch the goats and um, two are house dogs that just shed everywhere in the house. <laughs> Um, got one of them handheld Dysons. They work great. Oh, my, and the little scrapers for the carpet. They work miracles, miracles. That's why I'm happy. I don't have much carpet at this new place. And hey, doodle do happy to see you back. No risk, good reward. I I exactly. Uh, I mean, there's some risk. It's just not a lot of risk. Um, and that's why I like to trade You know, my, my current style. It's a mix of moving averages to kind of show me which way the momentum is going. And then on top of that, just having a solid plan in place. So if I do lose money, it's within an acceptable range. Um, my weakness is if I don't follow a plan and I get like the, the price is going down or it's not going in my way since sometimes I short. And what ends up happening is I get those butterflies in my stomach and I start to get worried. And when I get worried as an investor, I make really stupid mistakes as most people do. I'm not immune to it. So I pretty much designed my own personal strategy to not have to deal with those butterfly feelings, <laughs> feelings while I trade. Um, hey, Rohit. Yeah. Well, Rohit, in order to become a good trader, though, you, you have to do a lot of paper trading and you have to do a lot of practice and you have to be able to record all of your trades. I feel like what people don't understand about learning how to invest is that you could try to learn how to trade forever, but unless you're making the fundamental changes to become a full-time investor, you're normally just losing money over and over and over and over and over again to people like me who know how to make money. I'm the guy that's uh, selling you my overpriced uh, position and uh, the one that's buying when everybody else panic sells, right? Um, so the way I view it personally is um, you learn all the basics, you read a whole bunch of books on the topic, you watch a bunch of videos of videos your thing. I'm making videos right now for you guys. Um, and then after that, you start um, testing out what works best for you by practicing the patterns that you've learned in the books and on videos. Once you've done enough practice, you'll have compiled enough data to tell you what you're good at and what you're bad at. Once you understand what you're good at, you can start allocating real funds to those trades. And already off the bat, you know that you're going to have a higher success rate than like 80% of everybody else that's ever traded just by understanding what you're good at before you even head into the market. Um, 
you know, it, it is that type of stuff, which is really, really hard for new investors to get a grasp of. Because when you see people like me or my friend Tom Crown or uh, BitBoy or um, Jordan Cameron or anybody out there online these, uh, these days, um, you're kind of seeing what we've been able to develop ourselves into as far as technical analysis, entertainers, influencers, whatever. Um, but you, people don't see the hard work that went in. And then when we actually do make videos most of the time, um, because we all kind of have our own busy lives and we're all doing a bunch of other stuff, you guys only see like, um, remember what I just showed you guys a few minutes ago? Um, let me do it very fast. Um, uh, yeah, I can do this. So you'll see these, like, right? Warrior King is a very, very good trader, but his whole business, YouTube business, is designed to get you to go to his page, right? I'm not gonna go to the video, but you know, go to his website. Oh, uh, yeah, website. Right, um, products, trading courses, the basics, is to try to get you to spend $700 in this course. His whole brand is designed to get you to pay that. All right, now, my whole design, the way I'm building up this channel right now, is to get you guys to watch my content uh, donate to the channel, watch the ads on the channel so I can make money. But instead of trying to get you guys to pay like six, 700 bucks or 4,000 bucks for a course, it's kind of crazy, right? Instead of getting you guys to pay for that course, what I'm trying to do is just to get you guys to watch my videos. And if you guys are just watching my videos, all you have to worry about is ads. And I, I just don't think people, when they're first learning, learning how to trade, will even understand what he's talking about if you spend the seven hundred or four thousand dollars, right? Um, but all YouTubers are kind of geared to sell you something, right? Some YouTubers like me, um, we do affiliate links, so I'll promote you guys. Like, hey, I like to use TradingView. If you guys are going to use TradingView, please use my link. So if you guys sign up, I won't get any money, but I'll get some coins which I can use for little tools on the the platform, right? If you guys sign up for Finviz under my account and you guys pay for a month of Finviz Elite, I get paid like 10 bucks or something like that. Um, that's the way I like to go for it. That way there's no real paywall for you guys to learn. I don't like the idea of charging you guys to learn. Um, the way I charge you to learn is by asking you to use my links when you eventually do sign up for a product that you may like or you may not. If you don't like it, you don't use the link, right? Um, or you guys will um, watch my videos and the way I make money off of that is you guys are gonna be watching ads and that turns into a recurring passive income for myself, um, right? But at the end of the day, you know, I'm a trader. I make the majority of my income from trading. After that, I run a marketing business and the marketing business is the second source of income. And then after that, then you got YouTube, <laughs> right? So, um, and I'm never shy about showing you guys how much money I make off of YouTube. La what did I say last time? Like a thousand bucks I think I made. Um, I'm never shy about showing you guys how much I make. Um, so, you know, my goal with this new course for you guys is to really just make it as easy as possible for you guys to not have to pay to learn because, you know, all YouTubers give you a good amount of information, but they don't give you enough to become full time. My goal is to try to do that um, but it's very hard for one person to do all that work, which is why normally other people pay a team to help them out and they charge a whole bunch of money to recoup that investment. Um, I'm trying to do the, the work up front. So, you know, it'll be a passive income down the road besides all the dividends I tell you guys to buy, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, Mr. Perman, it, it's, it's kind of weird with them, but I mean, once you get down to their eye level, they are just like the rescue dogs I'm talking about. They are just the most gentle creatures ever, and they're just so nice and playful. You get a little bit of a rope, you get a ball, get a toy, they'll love you. Um, and like, it was the first day I ever met them. I learned it pretty fast. You just got to get down to their eye level. Um, maybe I should watch some more of that, that dog whisperer show. I never watched it before, but I know that uh, he got bit by a dog, I think, 
a few months ago. Oh, man. I have a French Bulldog, too. You should get one of their funny. Oh, gosh. If I didn't have Loki, I probably would get another dog. I'm thinking about getting another dog, but it's going to be a girlfriend for him. So he can have little puppies. So I can have little puppies. So what do you call? So, you know, I can be a little grandfather. <laughs> I'd love that. Uh, and hey, school guy. Happy to see you back. Ethereum looks good on chart. Hey, doodle do. I'm waiting for Ethereum to break out above the 200 daily moving average. If that occurs, it is going to rip. Rip, 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 rip. And hey, Pokemon, happy to see you back, man. I don't know about BitBoy. Sorry, I'm going to time myself out uh, for him that. What do you call? Oh, no, no worries, guys. I mean, everybody has different experience with them. We all know BitBoy's had issues. I cut myself. I don't know why. I cut myself with my finger, guys, a while ago. I don't know how, but it, it, it's annoying. Um, but yeah, BitBoy's had controversy. BitBoy has had controversy. I am not. I have not shied away from talking about <laughs> said controversies. Um, but yeah, um, probably not the best for technical analysis. I would say he is more of a influencer leading the way for anti-regulations and trying to make the try to help as many people as he can make money, I guess you would say. Um, but even that's kind of hard to say at some points, right? Um, but I met the guy. He's really nice in person, but um, he is a shrewd businessman. And that businessman side of him has gotten him in some <laughs> a little bit of trouble uh, for sure. Um, <laughs> you time yourself out, jeez. Uh, I've noticed a huge uptick in YouTubers starting discords and persuading people to go join for ten bucks a month. I know it, it's weird. I mean, I'm gonna start asking people to sign up for my Discord again and try to get it revived a little bit down here, probably closer to uh, December, November, uh, December, uh, January. Uh, I'm partnering up with Bing X, and this is another affiliate link, right? I'm not getting paid by them. I'm just doing an affiliate link program. But Bing X is another exchange, and don't sign up for them yet because I don't have my link yet. Um, and what what's going to be nice with Bing X is they're going to be part of the the Discord channel. So if you guys ever have a problem, you guys can um, uh, message them in Discord, and they'll help you live. And so if you guys having to go with different supports, they'll tell you guys how to. Uh, you guys know when you join in exchange and they have all these things that say, hey, you can make up to a thousand bucks. A Femex was up to $4,400 when they were sponsoring the channel. You can make up to this much money. They'll clearly tell you how to get all that money to make sure you actually maximize the amount of money you can get by bringing money into the exchange. So they're going to kind of guide you throughout the process in a way that I can't because I'm not an employee that spends all my time there, right? So you guys can just ping them, ask for help, and their whole job is literally just to help you figure out your problem or fix your problem basically um but that's for like another week or so i got my account i think i have a link but i need to figure out where it's at and then um gotta do some other stuff with them but yeah it'll be pretty chill the partnership i'm working on right now uh, is tradesing um i can't tell you too much too much about it now because it's still in closed beta but they're trying to become a youtube specifically for finance channels and what makes them so cool is um what makes them so cool and interesting is I would say this. Um, imagine you're watching me on YouTube, right where you are right now. But imagine on the right hand side of your screen or if you're on your phone, there's a little button uh, that shows you uh, what my current trade is. Like I'm, I'm doing a video right now about me going long on Bitcoin. Like, like a few minutes ago, I told you guys uh, right over here that Bitcoin was going to pop up a little bit, right? Let's just say I, I put that into words and I put that as a trade on the channel. You guys could literally just push a button and copy that trade. And so you could trade through the app of which you're watching me. That's what makes it so cool. So I could put out a trade for you guys. You guys could easy, easily follow it. It would just be up to you guys to determine when you guys want to sell. Right? So that's how I think about trade, uh, trade Zing. And that's why I'm excited for it. But it's still in a closed beta. I'm in the beta. So I have access to it all. But um, there's so many passwords and like walls that you guys will not be able to get past in order to get onto that website. Uh, so what do you call it? But you know, I'm working on a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes, but so much of it is protected by uh, NDAs, like non-disclosure agreements, that I can only talk about it so much, which is why it's been such a pain for me to try to build up this course. But I finally worked in about two to three hours a day, most likely two hours a day, where I can work on this course and teach you guys everything I know about trading. And it's not, it's even more about, it's even more than just trading. like. Uh, tomorrow or Sunday, you guys are going to have the first intro video. 
I don't expect it to get many views because all it is is just introducing the course and what you guys are going to be learning about. I appreciate it if you guys watch it. If not, it's fine. Um, after that, I don't even talk about trading. I talk about how to start saving enough money so you can trade in the first place. Then after that, we start breaking down, hey, here's what stocks are. Here's what uh, options are. Here's what crypto is. And here's the goal you guys are going to try to at first buy low, sell high. We'll, we'll talk about shorting another time, like later on in the course, right? But I'm breaking it down to as small piece as I can. So even like a 15 year old who grew up in the ghetto, like I did, um, could like start understanding how to save money uh, in, a, in a smart uh, way so they can bring themselves out of poverty. And those people that are lucky enough to just like have over $20,000 a year jobs, $50,000 a year jobs, $70,000 a year jobs, they can start, they'll have a lot easier time on this course than somebody that actually has to save up for the money, right? I mean, a lot of you guys have already been saving up the money for a long time, haven't you? Um, so, you know, that that's the whole goal here. But um, I haven't had enough time to really work on all that stuff. I'm working on getting a podcast together. And I don't even know what the podcast is going to be named because it's still going to be on this channel. Um, of which I, um, so next week I have a meeting, uh, I'm going to have a, a video call that's going to be turned into a podcast where I just ask them some questions, just talk about the current market. It'll be me talking about the market for the week. No, I can't do it that way. I'll just have to do like a cool 15 to 30 minute conversation and that'll be the video. But you know, I'm going to record everything. It has to go back to the, his, uh, his boss and it has to go through compliance and they're going to cut out parts of the video they don't like. And then I have to edit those parts out. And then I have to make it still look okay. <laughs> and then I get to upload it for you guys. So there's like a whole process to everything I'm doing right now. It's just like draining. But it's going to be so cool when it ends up working out. Right? Um, so like that's why I've been like, I went to Vegas. I didn't have to go to Vegas, but I enjoyed it. I need to treat myself out some more. I'm going to sushi at the end of the month and I'm taking my mom and sister, but until then I'm really just hunkering down and working, uh, playing with Loki. I, oh, I treated myself by buying that ring. I remember I told you guys I was buying that ring from Nordstrom's. Um, let me go back over here to, uh, how do I do this? Uh, I told you guys I was going to buy a ring from here. Um, I don't know if I still, if they still have it on the website. No, they still have it on the website. I don't know what I'm talking about. Sterling Silver, the 92.5 or whatever it's called. Yeah, this one. It was only 425 bucks. It wasn't like it was breaking the bank. You can see they have much more expensive ones. I just don't like wearing diamonds on rings for me. I got a diamonds in my watch, but I don't need diamonds in my ring. It's like too flashy. Um, but I managed to buy the ring and it's, it's freaking nice. I like it a lot. Um, I thought I was kind of afraid it was going to be too dark. And see how there's like a little bit of darkness right there. It wasn't too dark, so I was pretty happy with it. But um, uh, that's how I treat myself. See? Oh, wait. Yeah, I got it on my finger. Yeah. See? Oh, I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah. But it's nice. I enjoy it. It's a nice little waves ring. The only thing is, it's I cut myself while cutting duck the other day. So now the ring is going over the cut, and it freaking hurts. Um, I probably should take it off, but, you know, I probably won't. <laughs> right? Um... see and hey guys um oh and also going back to youtubers the, the reason they're trying to charge you money is because they're making less money from youtube than they did a few months ago than they did a few years ago um so the person i usually like using is an example here just because this person had a lot of growth just like me but also came down um is um uh, matt wallace matt wallace um I don't know if that's his YouTube channel. Yeah, so Matt Wallace. Okay, so very large YouTuber, over 263,000 subscribers, a lot. This guy is losing subscribers, right? And uh, September, he lost a thousand subscribers. He lost subscribers, not gained subscribers like I did. I'm like moving up very slowly, but he lost subscribers. His views for the last 30 days are down 50%. All right, he's losing viewership uh, now this is hold on a second he must have two channels there's, there's another one but there's another one what's the other what's the other matt wallace channel because i know he didn't have that, that low of views last year unless something really crazy went down i'm going to type in dogecoin he'll his channel should pop up here fairly soon
Who's this channel? Um, you need to see I'm watching videos about Twitter and whatnot. Maybe Twitter live stream? I don't know, live? Oh, I don't want it to be live live right now. It's not like it was a live video. The Dogecoin millionaire, I don't know. Um, Isn't his name Matt Willis? I don't know what his channel is. Final Stand, that's the channel. Okay, Final Stand, okay? So whatever his main channel is, it's losing, uh, it's it's losing viewership but here's this other one okay there we go so you see over the past few months february a thousand down a thousand down he just started getting a, a subscribers again because dogecoin just started popping off but you can see how many views he was getting you know 230 uh, 364,000 240,000 and you can see i kind of going down 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 as that goes down the money goes down with it and you know social blade has these like estimates of how much money they think youtubers are making it's not this much it's a lot less than this okay um so if the, if you know if he was living very a well like a very good life here um you know back last year when dogecoin was popping off and everybody was watching his content everybody giving him donations right now you know he's not struggling for wealth he's not struggling for money but he's not, he's looking for a way to supplement the income that he's lost a few, um, uh, over the past few uh, quarters, right? Um, so what a lot of YouTubers, YouTubers, YouTubers are doing, excuse me, is they're trying to find a way to supplement the income. Matt Wallace isn't a trader. He doesn't know how to make money out of the market. He's a guy that believes in something, so he buys it and then he just holds it. No problem with that whatsoever. He's just not, an, he's not a trader. Um, uh, you know, so that's the way you got to look at him. But that's why so many YouTubers out there are trying to find new ways to make money. It's just the way of the market right now. Um, be happy I make money trading. Because <laughs> if I was Matt Wallace, uh, I don't even know if I'd probably be using Discord as much. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it just it's just a weird concept. Um, that's why I don't like to be like, I don't want to be an influencer full time. I like having a marketing business, uh, the YouTube business, and just my own trading skills to kind of guide me through my monetary journey, whatever you want to call it. Anything left for Dogecoin? Um, Dogecoin can pop, but it would probably have to pop over the next 8 to 16 hours. That's what you're looking at for Dogecoin. You, you, the time to place your bets is probably going to be over the next 4 hours. Uh, if you expect something good to happen, watch for the moving averages on the 4 hour chart primarily. Yeah, Ghost Rider, you're right there, yeah. And not so much a trader, yeah. Some charge more than $50, mostly that's to keep out the spammers and trolls. I think that's a good rule for some of the people out there. Um, there was a trader, I joined his group a long time ago. Um, I didn't really pay for it though because I was helping him with marketing, hence I have a marketing business. Um, I think he had like 400 people-ish paying 50 bucks a month. It's a pretty good freaking, you know, if you can get it going, you got it going. Um, but primarily what, how those groups work, some of the larger ones, is they pay. So you, you pay, but uh, but there's like maybe five traders, 10 traders on the, on the Discord that are helping people out and that money gets split up between them. That's usually how it works out. So it's not like he's making all the money. It's like split up between all the people uh, contributing to the, the Discord channel. the whole gala debacle any opinion uh any opinion on that? i haven't looked at uh i haven't looked at it yet um gala i just thought of it as a big pump and dump but i haven't actually looked at any of the news on it about gala here news hmm a hack attack Gala down by 30% after $1 billion hack fe fears fuel FUD. Oh, 
All right. Um, wait, this is a casino. Why do they have a casino picture there? Um, <laughs> panic in in ensued earlier today after a huge chunk of gala was minted. The stockpile was estimated to be worth $2 billion, causing widespread speculation about the possible hack on the play-to-earn platform Gala Games. Early reports indicated that an attacker minted $2.17 billion worth of Gala on BSC. $10.72 billion of the minted tokens were then dumped on PancakeSwap. Oh, an action that led to the pool of PancakeSwap being completely drained. <laughs> Traders exploited the situation and proceeded to buy Gala from PancakeSwap only to sell it on Hubi Global. This caused the token's price to tank significantly on the price charts. On-chain sleuths have ident identified Binance as the exchange used by the, le the alleged hacker. That's usually what they would go for. P-Network, a multi-chain routing protocol, was the first to address the abnormally, uh, abnormality with Gala and P-Gala. The protocol cited for a misconfigured, misconfigured P-Network bridge which reportedly re redeployed Gala. Interestingly, Gala Games president Jason Brink has ruled out foul play in this matter. Uh, I wouldn't, he's probably lying, but let's read what he says. Everything is fine. That's what a liar says. Oh gosh. Everything is fine. The activity you have been seeing on PancakeSwap is, is Pete Network and it working uh, to drain the liquidity pool, he tweeted. However, Brink urged users to stop buying P Gala from PancakeSwap. The Gala bridge has been suspended and the company has announced that once the pool is completely drained, a new P Gala token will be created and airdropped to all previous holders. Ouch. Um, delay an official statement by Gala Games. The, company, the company's failure to thoroughly communicate with their users is most likely the single biggest reason for the token to drop by almost... Is most likely the single biggest reason for the token to drop by almost 30% uh, after pressing. Oh, okay. That's a weird uh, grammar. The president of the firm addressed the FUD concerns almost two hours after reports of the supposed hack started pouring in. Meanwhile, Gala Games' Twitter handle did not put out an official statement for almost four hours. By that time, the damage had eventually ev evidently been done. Hmm. I mean... It seems like Gala would be pretty fun to do some day trading on if their business is still doing okay. I would say that I would be looking to buy some more for a long-term hold personally. Um, I don't really have much Gala for long-term. I kind of just played the pop that happened a while ago, as you guys know, but I toss in a hundred bucks to Gala to see what would happen on the next few days, especially if Bitcoin's finding a way to go back up. That could be pretty nice, but I bought Gala like june lows is about so it's probably gone down lower than that bitcoin's trying to have a little bit of a rally here and we'll watch that in a second here but as far as gala is concerned let's go to the daily chart all right so i bought it over here <laughs> i'm still down um so we had the crash the spike back up looks like you kind of missed the opportunity to buy here um Crosses popping up. Golden Cross is about to pop up here. What are we looking at here if it does make a move? 10%, 12%, 26%. I don't even know if I want to do a long-term trade on this sucker since I already have some money put into it. However, um, what is, oh, the June lows were over here. Oh, this is played out differently. Okay. Um, I might have fun buying now and selling it within two days. I don't know if I'd actually have fun uh, holding this for a long-term play. It's already gone back down to the price it was back over here in like September of 2021. I don't know. Um, I, I've never actually clicked on that button before. Um, but yeah, I, I would probably say be careful for holding this for long term. I have, so if you're buying more, I already bought some, so I don't feel like I need to. But um, yeah, this is, eh, eh. I, I, uh, it, it seems kind of risky. It seems very risky here. Um, but for day trading or holding for a couple days, it could be pretty fun. I could see it having a nice little rip effect here. Try to buy on a dip if you can, though. Anything still moving up a little bit? No, not much. Okay. 
Come on, Bitcoin. I just want to see 21,500 here. And hey, Pepin, you can copy trade on Femex now. I love copy trading. It makes life a lot easier. Interesting to see um, leaders, but I, uh, but for me, I'll just let uh, let people follow me. <laughs> Mike, you're awesome. Don't stop. I appreciate it, my man. Matt Wallace is a joke, though. Hey, you know, the way I think about it is in terms of influencers, because now I represent a few, or I at least talk on behalf of brands to get new influencers to like help with their deals and whatnot. What I realized is influencers to a large degree they have fun doing what they're doing and they're just trying to maximize as much money as they can the problem i would see when you go into matt wallace territory is he falsely claims that the market is going to move one way or the other without having much data to back it up and when he does that people tend to lose money because a lot of the people that watch him are those newer investors right and that that's the kind of the issue here right um people lose money based off of what he what he says and he doesn't seem to care about that um you know i've made wrong calls in the past but i, I would like to think i'm at least putting more effort into the calls i'm giving you instead of just saying hey everybody the market's going down and it's going to go down forever you know you know i put more effort into it let's see is it better to hold long-term crypto right now in this bear market or trade day by day for profit uh, while still having money invested and still taking the profit out? Uh, I don't exactly know what you mean. And Keo, thank you for saying final stand hours. Um, uh, but what do you call? Um, so I have a long-term portfolio in which I'm dollar cost averaging into. If we have a major drop in assets, I tend to buy it up. Same with the meta, uh, Amazon the past few days even going over to Bitcoin, which has had the lows back in June, um, I tend to do dollar cost averaging for that. But as far as my day-to-day -day, you know, life of trying to make money, I'm mostly doing day trading right now with a sliver of swing trading. And usually swing trading is only, I'm only in there for maybe two to three days at this point. Um, so depending on which trading method makes you the most money, I would say uh, day trading is probably where I like to be at, especially when it comes to cryptocurrencies because you don't have to worry about the pattern day trading rules, right? Um, but if you are, if you have your long-term account and your short-term account kind of just merged into one bundle here, um, it, you know, it, it might seem a little bit more worrisome because you're forced to look at the, the losses every day, <laughs> right? Um, I would say I'm leaving my long-term positions alone. They were put there to be long-term and I'm not going to mess with them. Um, the only way I mess with those long-term positions is if the market spikes up really fast and I have a good feeling that's going to be coming back down. So I'll sell off 20% to 30% of those assets and then I'll be buy them back down a few days later once the price comes back down and I'll, I won't really turn a profit from it, but instead I'll make about another... Um, you know, I'll may maybe make another 20% more coins. So my port, like the number of Matic I would have is 20% more Matic coins. So that in the long term, I'm going to able to be, be able to make more money because I have more coins in that portfolio, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it, it depends on what you're good at. Honestly, if you're good at swing trading, do swing trading. If you're good at day trading, do day trading right now. But I still have long-term funds allocated for the market. Right now is still a great time to be dollar cost averaging. A great time if you're going to be holding Bitcoin for a few years. So right now, even if Bitcoin goes to 5,000, 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, whatever, it's still a great time to be buying now for long-term positions. You just got to manage your, you know, your, your, your portions here and just go bit by bit by bit of buying. Dollar cost averaging, right? Let's see. I don't know what marinade is. Uh, what do you mean by, what's marinade? Also, he scammed people out of thousand dollars with some crypto he tried launching. Oh, I forgot about that too. So yeah, so you got some problems there. Um, I know a lot of people want me to launch a crypto coin, but I don't know how to launch one, and I don't want to because of that, those type of reasons here. Because um, I, I don't want to fill it up with liquidity and stuff like that, and just have uh, people try to sell it out. You know, or just uh, sell it all. Um, but somebody just said something else here. Uh, who is the other one? Uh, who is the other one that scammed people out of a lot of money? 
he has a channel, but it's like it's not it's not as popular anymore because he got demolished by everybody on YouTube. Uh, he was a big Dogecoin guy. Casey Crypto is his new name. I, I forget what it is now. You guys will let me know. The guy that launched a coin with a bunch of people and the, the, the coin just like dive bombed one day. Uh, Casey Crypto is his name now, but um, he's an older gentleman with the glasses. He's kind of nerdy, but I, I used to like the nerdiness about him, but yeah. Um, and hey, GT, Tom Crown streams have been doing well late, as of late. Yeah, Tom has been doing a lot of rounds on going on other people's YouTube channels. And he's been getting a lot of subscribers from just the, the um, going over to people's YouTube channels, like uh, collaboration. That's the word I'm looking for. And when he does those collaborations, YouTube sees that, hey, people like his content. Or, like uh, People are subscribing to his channel, so we should show his content to more people. I don't like doing collaborations all too much. I don't have the personality for it, honestly. Um, but it's been it's been helping out his channel a lot. Like me and Tom are good friends. I just literally talked with him for like a good half an hour today uh, messaging we were joking because um here <laughs> i mean i've already been blocked by this account but i'll tell you what i was talking to him about uh i won't share with i won't share our conversation but um right here so you see this little message right here hello hope you've been benefiting from my uh my content this is a spam account that's mimicking tom so i showed it to him and i just started we were just cracking up about it because we'd been talking about how bad the bots have been getting on twitter and youtube and telegram over the past few weeks um, and so I reported it, but I tried to go visit this guy's channel. Cause you can see it says Tom crown, but when it says crypto that it's missing the T in crypto and again, Tom would never message me. <laughs> Tom would never message me on Twitter. We don't talk on Twitter, <laughs> on Twitter at all. I look at it. Uh, I, I, I messaged Westgate, MGM grand hotel, a few people that have, uh, like the ring people. NFT Seattle, some uh, some friends from uh, crypto events, uh, and a, 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 a chat room group, right? That's I don't really use Twitter for much as far as messaging people. Um, but if I go to his page right now, I'm blocked. <laughs> and you see um, Tom's main page here, um, right? Tom's right here. He really has like 23,000 followers. Most stuff is pretty much the same, but you know, um, tried to copy him exactly. It was absolutely, um, just absolutely hilarious. Um, uh, we, we talk a lot. Uh, we've mostly been ranting to each other about how bad YouTube shorts is versus TikTok. Um, you know, we, I posted a video on TikTok and I posted the same video on YouTube and the views were so bad. I, I told you guys about this the other day, but I rant about Tom with this. We, we rant to each other about this stuff a lot, but, um, on YouTube, the video got 3,600 views. On TikTok, my video got 2.2 million. Like, Shorts needs to step up its game here a lot if they want to compete <laughs> with what he called. If they want to compete. Let's see. And hey, Rohit, tame the arc, $50 for Discord. Yeah, um, I don't see the benefit from tame the arc. His technical analysis is kind of so like my technical analysis probably wouldn't be accepted by wall street. Even if I was making good money, they probably, well, they might be happy. I'm making money, honestly, but what do you call like my technical analysis is one that kind of came up with me learning how to do it myself. And that's the strategy you guys are learning, but you can see like you guys have watched me long enough to see how my technical analysis works and how I, uh, when I don't make a good trade, I can get out of the trade really easily. And if it, do, if it does go my way, I can scale out and uh, make sure I lock in gains. Um, uh, his channel, his technical analysis, it, it almost feels like he just watches me or Tom or another YouTuber out there then tries to like put that on his channel. Um, it, sometimes it just feels like he doesn't understand completely what he's talking about and all the tools and indicators that other people use on their channels. Right. Um, like over time, I kind of built in indicators into the channel. Because normally when I first started off, I just had charts on the screen and I was looking at a whole bunch of stuff, just kind of remembering what I had on my other charts. So, um, I would have Fibonacci charts on like another monitor. And then you guys would just see this, like, you know, without just a plain chart with moving averages. And I would have a chart over here or a, a monitor over here with all the technical analysis on it, because I was always afraid it was going to be too cluttered. So what I do now is I just basically have, um, I, I moderated a little bit. So not as much clutter. So you guys can see what's going on. 
but um, you know, it, yeah, he's a little weird. Uh, not him. The technical analysis, technical analysis. But he does have a very big community, and they um, they will watch his content. King Clickbaiter, yeah, definitely. Uh, his thumbnails and titles uh, lie a lot, lie a lot. Let's see, Tim has no teeth. Not financial advice. All YouTubers have not financial advice. It's to protect us from all the, the crazy people that want to sue us out there. Hey, school guy. I like to watch scammers get scammed. <laughs> oh, man. And hey, uh, Joss King Salvador. I appreciate it very, very much. Salvador. Sal, 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 Divar. Sal Divar. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ooh, no. Mike, I've unsubscribed to tons of influencers. A lot of the AMC YouTubers who misled new investors, a lot of the Doge pumpers too. I listen to you and a guy named Tony Denaro. What do you call? I mean, over time, you guys find people that you like and understand that the, just by being on YouTube, most people that teach you how to trade, they're most likely just looking for views and money. It's rare that you find a person like me or Tom or somebody else that like can just kind of advise you on what can happen from the good perspective and the bad and kind of how to get into the position and out of the position. Um, I mean, we could all be better at our jobs of doing that, but I think we've all kind of reached a point where like we're doing a decent amount of, we're doing a good enough job where, you know, if you guys are listening to us, you guys can make some good money and what's an easy way to say this like we rely on you guys to also do your part to learn how to trade we're not here to make life very easy for you we're here to kind of gently guide you in the right direction we're not here to kind of spoon feed you now i'm making a course to spoon to spoon feed you but um that's an investment of my time and i'm hoping that it pays off again with a passive income that i get from youtube right it's so not really you but you from watching ads not me asking you guys to pay for stuff um and i'm gonna put this i'm gonna put this um this course on all the platforms that i have so youtube i haven't used rumble yet but i'll be putting on a rumble there's a website called skillshare i'll be putting on skillshare um any website that i have like maybe even facebook if i can i will not not facebook but i will have this entire course on uh most of my social platforms that way you guys can just go through the playlist and you know watch two videos take a break and go live out your life for the week come back learn some more go out do your life for a little bit work whatever family come back learn some more and during, you know in between those times you're practicing and learning how to become a better trader and learning the information that i'm going to be trying to teach you guys I appreciate that very much, Skull Guy. Twenty-one thousand five hundred Bitcoin. I'm waiting for it, guys. We got close. We got close. It was twenty-one thousand four sixty-three, so I was like thirty-seven bucks off, thirty-six twenty-six or something like that bucks off. Uh, see, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but I still, I don't, I still want to see us break out here. I just thought we might have the initial pop might go there, but. If we, if we go there later on, cool. I'll still take it as a <laughs> as a win. Um, let's see. And hey, just go. Oh yeah, I mean, remember guys, I make money trading. I don't have to push anything onto. I don't have to sell you anything. Um, now I get sponsors every now and then that pay for me to tell you guys like, hey, sign up for this. But I have to vet them clearly to say, hey, I like this. Otherwise, I won't do it. Like, I, I've showed you guys emails before. How many people have asked me to pump up some shit coin? I won't do it. Um, I just won't do it. It just, it's not in my brand. Heard a whistle, like from, from the backyard or something. Um, but yeah, it, it's just not worth it. I don't, yeah, it's just, yeah. Uh, let me get rid of this girls online thing right here. There we go. Just don't forget us when you make it big time. Oh, no. What do you call? I mean, I plan on doing YouTube for the rest of my life or at least until I'm old and I can't like, you know, must up the energy to stream for like an hour or two a day. Um, but I plan on doing this for a long period of time. 
and you guys know like when the views or when the market's slow i don't get many views but guess what when the when the market is good you guys know i can get a lot of views i don't feel the pressure to get views right now um i feel the pressure to really make a tutorial and grow my marketing business that's really where my priorities are kind of leaning right now and then you know as the fun parts and kind of just like the, the good parts of the day um where i enjoy stuff i kind of like you know i enjoy talking with you guys and doing the streams and whatnot but uh you know just a few months ago i would feel so much pressure just to get views back up because i thought like views on youtube were so important and then i realized that um like youtube like from an analytical perspective like the algorithm it doesn't like my channel right now and it can turn off views to a channel or like it can it can like throttle the views to a channel and it can turn them back up right now it's throttling those views down and i'm fine with that um I, you guys know i've been ranting about this for a while it's just not going to give me what I need unless there's a huge demand for the content, and that's fine. Um, so what I'm doing now is just, you know, chilling out, talking with you guys, and working on a course, and seeing how that course does down the road. And I'm fine with that. And make other tutorials as well, but I think right now, no more tutorials until this course is over. This is going to be um, 50 hours plus of educational content that I have for you guys. Again, not only about trading, but by budgeting, finance, like get your, get your finances in order before you start trading. Um... And then from there, you know, what is a candle bar? How to read a single candle bar? How to re re read a candle bar pattern? How to set up completely a trading view chart? How to set up, you know, Finviz? A part of the tutorial will, will be me making a new video, uh, more clear and maybe shorter, where I explain how to use all of these uh, indicators here, excuse me, all these uh, preset scanners. That way you guys don't have to try to learn all this stuff yourself. You can just have all this preset. No, make it nice and easy for you. Again, spoon feeding you guys, but through tutorial videos, not while streaming. I can't spoon feed you guys through tutorials, uh, through online streaming. Like what I'm doing now, it's just impossible. See, bad guidance, yeah, exactly. What do I think about UVXY? It's a very long downtrend. Would it ever be able to have a long-term uptrend or is it something we can never gain in value? Um, it's usually just something that comes down every now and again. It's not really something you want to buy and hold for extended periods of time. Like here, we can go over to it very fast. Uh, actually, no, I can probably just pull up on Finviz so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There we go. Monthly. <laughs> right. Um, so you know, it's the short-term futures uh, ETF. It's it it it's never gonna go up. You're usually just doing a little bit of a quick trade, and you're just hoping to buy it at a good level of support and watch it rebound here. I think if we come back maybe towards December, you may have another opportunity. But I would say, sometime next year, it's probably gonna get reset. You're gonna have a split. I don't know when the last split was here though. Um, Uh, I can't find it. Uh, no, I don't see it. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's rare that I, I will ever trade this. If anything, you're going to be trading like the volatility indexes and stuff like that. And that's still pretty hard. I think right now we're still in the, maybe the twenties, maybe even the low thirties here and 35 is usually a big level of resistance for us. Them bots pushing some ugly girls too. Not that I checked. <laughs> oh man, Miles. Oh yeah. That, wait, what is Miles? Let's see, the, oh probably something I asked earlier. All right, Chrissy Crypto. Oh yeah, Chris Crypto. Yeah, his name is just not Chris. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, let me see if I can find this channel here very fast. Bitcoin needs to freaking hurry up. Am I missing something? This is the five minute chart. Yeah, we really need to make a move here. Otherwise we're breaking down, um, which would suck. Um, YouTube is where we're going. Hmm. 
yeah, so... I mean, but he's getting more views than me. He's getting more views than me. Uh, on my published content, so... But what do you call... Um, oh, he grew, he grew a beard to change his look. That's what happened. That's what he used to look like. He grew a beard to change his look. Ah, oh, that's smart. Okay. That's marketing 101 right there. Um... see yeah he has he has a solid fan base from his old channel i guess but man yeah it's just oof, um that was probably one of the uglier drop-offs uh, of last year Let's see if you guys can get me the marinade ticker i will look it up the ticker for marinade I see it's listed on Coinbase yesterday. You guys talking about that? And, uh, uh, Yas King, uh, Joss King. I don't have to pronounce his name, but yeah, you were talking about it as well. Carl the Moon launched that Costa token right at the end of last year. Something doesn't feel right with Carl and the uh, and the Who Dubai crew. Oh, geez, I don't see. I don't have too many connections in the crypto space. I'm getting them now, but uh, yeah, I don't know much about what's going on with it on the sketchy side of things and it's cool guy what kind of coin is michael launching oh i'm not launching any coin i'm not launching any coin right now or anytime soon um i might launch a coin eventually but i mean i just i would want there to be something some value behind it i would want there to be a utility built around the coin um i don't want it to be something that gets pumped and dumped or something like that I, I, you know, it might go through pump and dumps. I'm not saying it wouldn't, but like something where I could just own a piece. I can give a bunch of pieces to people that watch my channel. And then there's a business behind the scenes trying to get work done. And I'm just the marketing piece of the business. If that makes sense. Um, that's how I would have to view it. I just read something from an article that was quoting a lawyer that said the phrase not financial advice won't work actually from stopping from pursuing charges against people. Oh yeah, I read that a while ago. Uh, by a while ago, I mean like I think like two days ago. Um, it depends on how large you are and how egregious your mistake is. So for me, I have that on the bottom of my page, um, and it, it doesn't really affect people like me. So I can say like, "Hey guys, here's where I see the market doing. Here's where I see I think we can be going from now." I think I'm going to be buying at this level and selling at this level. I think that's where I want to be right now. That won't get me in trouble. However, if I come out and I start pumping up some coin like crazy saying, Hey everybody, go buy the Jambalaya coin. Jambalaya coin is going to go sky high. It is absolutely insane. I can see this thing going to the moon and back. Um, you know, and I'm a little bit more misleading, a little bit more. Um, you could feel that I'm not doing the right thing by doing that 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 little saying won't help you out at all yeah so it depends on how you're using it um i had to talk with a couple of lawyers that have a friend of mine they weren't my lawyers but i was asking about this uh maybe like last year they said the government doesn't care as long as you're not acting in bad faith um so i think that bad faith part is where it doesn't protect you because they could bring a court like let's say i told you guys that um A few months ago, I told you guys I thought the market was going to crash because of the death cross between the 20-week moving average and the 50. What if I what if I said like, hey guys, I'm selling, I'm opening shorts, and you guys uh, did all that with me. You guys followed my followed my my trap my strategy there, but instead of the market crashing like it did, what if the market ended up going up and you guys lost a few thousand bucks or you guys just lost money? If you guys sued me. I would win the court case because I would have in the bottom that says, hey, this is not financial advice. You guys hear me say it constantly on the channel. This is not financial advice. Um, the, the, the court would like 99.9% .9 of the time come with side of my side. But again, if I go back over there and, I, and I'm like, hey, everybody, um, this, this, new, like, this new coin came out uh, and you guys should really buy it because it's doing something really amazing and you guys just have to buy it. I believe in this with my body and soul. And then it tanks after you buy it and you guys sue me, you know, there'd be a 60 to 80% chance I would still get off of it. But that chance would go down a lot.
and hey gt i hope i can get up to a million subscribers that'd be awesome what i gotta do and you know you know how i keep my youtube income separate from my trading income or my business income what, what i've been trying to do is build up more tutorials which is i'm working on now of course but i need to learn i'm not even going to learn how to do it i'm just going to freaking pay an editor at this point i'm going to pay an editor to help me make videos that are that will get more views so i will basically just record myself doing a bunch of just talking and talking about dirt certain stuff and I'll have a script and I'll read off the script and I'll make it sound very professional and formal. And then an editor will come up here and he'll make the videos look presentable to a YouTube audience. Because I've been trained my entire life to go off of the value of what I'm saying, not the way I'm saying it. Like I can do the sales things like this and I can, you know, marketing sales, I've done it before, but it's much different um, than, you know, how a YouTuber presents himself. So, you know, let's see. Um, there's a good YouTuber out there. This guy. We're heading to zero. A A Andre Juk. I can't pronounce his name. Right? Um, but, you know, he has a 15 minute video, uh, 239,000 views. Um, you go over here to his channel, uh, Social Blade. You look at it there you go over here you know he's lost about 25 percent of his views in the last 30 days so he's actually losing views right now but his channel is still growing he's still got 20,000 subscribers the last 20 days uh, 28 days um but he's like you know 200 to 300 thousand views per day um uh, he probably has an rpm of about five to six bucks so let me go over here to uh Let's go over here. Uh, oh, not for cars, but for YouTube. So let's go. What would we just say he was? Yes, yeah, so this is a day. So this is 234,000 views a day. Okay. So two, let's just go to 250, kind of round it off. 25,000, yeah, 250,000. Uh, RPM is probably somewhere around, what did I say, six bucks? He's making like 825 bucks a day. Not bad. And he doesn't even trade or anything like that. I would like to be at least making 200 bucks a day by making those types of videos for you. Although, you know, this isn't. He has to pay his editor. He has to do a whole bunch of stuff on the back end that like means that he's not really making 825 days a day in profit. Maybe more like 400 to 500 bucks a day in profit. Still great money. Um, but the more videos that he puts out there, the more money he'll be able to make in the long term. If he did tutorials, he would do much better. But you know, he's a he can talk about the news, and that's a good job for him. Um, so you know, maybe after all said and done, he's walking with like 400 to 500 bucks a day. That's a pretty good income, right? And that's not including sponsorships, which can Bring in a lot of money for videos like this you guys get what i'm saying um so i i'm hoping that i can get something like that down the road not making as much money i don't care about like that much money but um with the money i make from those videos i'll pay the editors off I'll, um and it will allow me to um rent a space in seattle um i don't see this is the part so i'm probably going to be moving to nicaragua still i still got to make sure everything kind of works out on that plan especially with the only problem right now literally is loki i gotta figure out how to get my dog down there um but i have to figure out like maybe if, if while i'm still in seattle whatnot um i could rent a studio out and i could have people over do a more formal podcast instead of like the, the, the zoom type of call i'm gonna be doing at, at the beginning here um because you know nobody's not everybody can fly out to seattle <laughs> right a lot of people just you know at, um online um, so I'm going to try to do that, but I'm trying to stockpile some money up so I can actually form a higher formal editor for that because I don't really know how much that would cost. And I've asked some people and I've tried to hire a couple editors, but I'm better than the editors who say they're really good. And I'm not, I'm like decent to bad, like okay to decent. 
I'm not good, great, awesome editor. I'm just okay. Um, and so I'm looking for a really good editor um, and I'm gonna save up to pay the editor, but it's it's like down the road I'm gonna have to do that because um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, stuttering over here, but I'm going to try to mimic his style of videos for my content. So he has a specific style that he does, like with a lot of flashing, a lot of moving around and stuff like that, explaining stuff. Not so much generic gobbledygook, but you know, real, um, I'm gonna try to do more value in the video than he's providing. That's an easy way to say, because he, he's giving value, but I wanna give you more value. He is more of a generic value that somebody that doesn't know much about Facebook, they're just finding out Facebook crash and this mildly curious of why Facebook crashed, they would go to his video. For me, it'd be why Facebook crashed for half the video and how you can make money off of the crash for the second part of the video. That's how I try to formulate my videos. Let's see right here. Euro, so I seen on Kraken. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of liquidity in this market at the moment. So the technical analysis here is gonna be kind of iffy. Um, if this is it, let me let me just go over here to coin market cap. I'm gonna try to find it too. Marinade steak. Is it marinade steak? I guess. Uh, it's only 18 million. Honestly, when it comes to this, it might have a pump if it's just getting posted on. If it's just getting put out on Coinbase. Um, But if you're looking to do a long-term investment, you're probably gonna have to go over here and see what they're talking about or what they believe in here. Not liquid. So I'm guessing a lot of people are probably staking at this point. That's why there's not much liquidity in the market. I would like to see more trading volume before I really would hop on into that. But, um, you can see it's had some spikes over the past few days, like some really big parabolic moves, at, at least over here on a Kraken. So it might just be worth it to have some type of $75 strike uh, uh, scale out price here and just wait for it to rip and then sell off. Or at least have a couple of alerts here on, um, on trading view so that when it does have one of these crazy pops like this up here, 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 you can just have, a, uh, have an alert set to your phone so when it does pop up, you can sell right there. And if you bought at 37 and you sell this pop up here, you know, wrong, wrong way. Oh, there's 30% profit just like that. I'm cool with taking my 30% profit. That's the way I'd be trading it right now. Um, now I'm looking at this in another way. Let's go over to here to Coinbase. A little bit more of a gradual upswing, a little bit more volatility here, a little bit more uh, liquidity. It looks a little bit nicer than the other chart from Kraken. Um, this one, if you're trading it on um, Coinbase, you're probably not gonna have that big spike up in um, the big spikes thing because there's more people trying to buy and more people trying to sell. Um, I mean, let's see, if it just opened up, I might have a price target of somewhere around like 40, 40 to $45 and just wait for it to pop up there, waiting for that, that, that post launch spike to happen. I'd be happy with it. I'd rather be trading on Kraken though, just because of those, those random spikes that keep happening. I don't know what they're about, but that liquidity is so low that somebody's, some dumb person's gonna buy up a market order and just drive the price up here. So, Bitcoin's still coming down a little bit here. And it's cool. Oh, exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, I can always say it's my opinion, whatnot. But nobody's ever sued me. I don't think anybody ever is. I mean, if they they can if they want to. I just don't think it would end up well for them. They'd just be wasting money to try to get money off of me. And I'm like, I can toss off a lawsuit pretty easily. Why doesn't Jim Cramer have to say not financial advice? Because they have that long, long, long like credit scene at the end of every episode where they just start, <laughs> where they start saying that this should not be taken as financial advice 
Uh, you may suffer losses if you do this play and will CNBC and uh, Kramer are not held responsible. You've never seen the CNB, um, CNBC. Uh, I'm misspelling disclaimer here. That's fine though. Yeah, man, money disclaimer. The one <laughs> you always see on top because this guy may loses people the most. See, uh, there you go. All opinions. Oh, this is the one for the website, not even for the show. All opinions expressed by Jim Kramer on this website are, uh, and on the show are solely Kramer's opinions and do not reflect uh, the, the opinions of CNBC, NBC Universal, or the parent company or affiliates, and may have been previously disseminated by Kramer on television, radio, or internet or other media. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Kramer as specific an inducement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy, but only as an expression of his opinion. Kramer's opinions are based upon information he considers reliable, but neither CNBC nor its affiliates and or subsidiaries warrant its complete, completeness or accuracy, and it should not be relied upon as such. Kramer, CNBC, and its affiliates or subsidiaries are not under any obligation to update or correct any information provided on this website. Past performance is not going to... They have... This is, the, the, this is what protects them. And if it can protect Jim Kramer, it can protect somebody like me. That's what I mean. Like, even if I did something really stupid, I could still bounce off a, um, a lawsuit pretty easily. All right. Um, but man, uh, you know, this is just the one for uh, the website. There's another one for the, uh, the TV and whatnot. So, yeah, it, it's kind of weird. Jim Kramer might be a certified financial advisor. He might be. I mean, I don't know who's following his advice nowadays. I feel bad for the people that call into him because he has not been making people a lot of money. Uh, it's just, yeah, it just has not been doing well for him so far. Oh, I see. Yeah, GT says it right there. He has his trading license. He is technically a financial advisor. Um, let's go Matic. Oh, Matic's trying to pump up a little bit here as well. What is Matic up to? It's up 4% right now. That's nice to see. Andre's buddy, Graham Stefan is good too. Yeah, they're very, very good. And they also have those side businesses going for them as well, right? YouTube isn't a full-time job, but they kind of outsource everything. I don't have the funds in my YouTube account to really uh, pay for like an editor to do a whole bunch of edited videos for me. It's something that I'm going to start to save up now, but um, most of the money for my YouTube channel goes towards the live streams, which are kind of losing me money at this point. Uh, I should probably take down the Luna live stream, um, but uh, maybe I'll think about it later on. Nobody actually watches it. Um, I can see the data from the back and not make me watch it at all. People love the Dogecoin stream. That's not going away ever. Um, but the, the, the Matic, or not the Matic, the, the, the other stream is probably going to go away sometime next month or something. Um, what else is there? Um, my separate Wi-Fi bill for the internet here. This is, this is for tax purposes. Um, you know, that type of stuff. But it's not too bad. I just got to save up for it. And hey, Kenzie, why am I not always getting notified when you go live? YouTube does not like my channel. Uh, that It's as simple as that. I wish I, I knew the reason for it. But um, it just... Uh, yeah. Um, since crypto has been going down, the viewership or the interest level in crypto has been going down. So YouTube assumes that people that like crypto don't like crypto as much. So it tries to get you to stop watching the content and move towards something that you would probably like to watch even more. The goal of YouTube is to keep you on YouTube for as long as possible. So a lot of people that like, when you guys are done with my stream, you guys probably don't go off and watch more YouTube videos. You guys might watch, uh, you guys might hop off of YouTube and go do some of your own work on charting, or you might go watch TV, or you might go live your life, right? Um, YouTube would like it more, or like my channel more, if you guys kept on watching YouTube after my stream, but... I'm not going to ask you guys to just keep watching YouTube for YouTube's sake, <laughs> right? Um, but that that's kind of one of the reasons why. It, it's kind of weird. It's all over the place. All right. <clears throat> Water's gone. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to pour some of this good old um, Glenfiddich in here. Probably not the best glass for it, honestly, but um, it'll do. I need to buy some more whiskey. Um, it'll do the trick. Oh, God, something about the way it smells is just awesome. There we go. Cheers, everybody. Let me hide my face so YouTube doesn't get mad at me drinking on stream. So, cheers. Clunk. Oh, 
Ooh. <laughs> that was strong, but good. It's kind of smooth. Uh, turn on uh, Turg log on weekly chart scroll up. Bitcoin looks bearish to me. Oh yeah, of course, of course it does. Long term, it looks very, very bearish. But we normally run up on the CPI dead, and that's what we've been talking about over the last few days. Um, I had a chart earlier. I don't know if it's still on here, but let me go back. Let me go to the weekly chart. I might. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it right here, right there. There it is. This general, <laughs> this general. This is not technical analysis based completely. It's just kind of a, like a, a vibe. Pump up. Then we take our next drop down. <clears throat> but, you know, I kind of have it like this where it kind of happens like in December. We may see, we may not see the drop happen until, you know, January or February or something. We don't know the exact time frame. But yeah, I, I agree. Uh, long term or more medium term going into 2023. Bitcoin still looks bearish, but I can't keep saying Bitcoin is bearish over and over and over again. It becomes a little bit more of a kill <laughs> killjoy here, right? <laughs> Jimmy. Um, I, I, I'm okay with it. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay talking about the short term good stuff every now and again. I need to put up another chart here pretty soon as well, because I do want to do some more GAN fans and some Fibonacci circles pretty soon too. Right now, Bitcoin is just doing a whole bunch of hot nothing, though. We end up coming back, like I said, after the uh, 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 double top, 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 broke the neckline, came back to retest, came back down. Another double top here. Jeez, came back up, come back up a little bit. Somebody is trying to keep us from popping, but I think we'll eventually be able to break out of that, uh, <clears throat> that setup that they're making. There you go. Dude, just one sip of booze and my throat's already scratchy. Jeez. Hey, guys. Uh, can I look at oh ape yeah here we go let me check it out very fast bitcoin's not doing anything uh let's see finance yeah hmm <laughs> Well, it hasn't broken out yet, so it still has a little bit more room it can run up. I would see you have a little bit of a double bottom, bottom, bottom uh, neckline over here. I would probably buy this if it breaks out above the neckline here. So bottom, oh, geez, the uh, magnet's on. Neck, uh, bottom, bottom, neckline. If it can close above that bottom, I'd probably buy it early, expecting that it would actually break out above the neckline here and start breaking out above the trend line and start running into the 200 daily moving average. That 200 daily moving average would probably bring it up to around $6.46. Let's just call it $6. A little bit light on that, right? Um, and that'd be around a 20% profit. Not too bad. Oh, excuse me, 25% profit. I would like that. Uh, my concern for it right now basically is watch out again for these two up here. Watch out as it attempts to break out over the next few days and this other breakout opportunity that's going to be right there, right? So either one, I'd be happy to buy the breakout. Uh, but honestly, if you're going to be doing day trading, the day, uh, the 15 minute chart is going to be giving you some handy breakouts here. If I can get it there. Oh, this actually even had a false breakout. Never mind. Oh, yeah, uh, it tried. You see the force here? It got shorted back down. Nope, probably best to be staying with the daily charts on this one then, or the four hour. If the 15 is not going to be giving you any good graces. Let's see. Yeah, I would say for now, as long as it doesn't break down below this trend line, it'd be okay to buy and hold for a little bit of time. The last few times it's broken down, though, it just, you know, break down, break down, 
Uh, watch out for the breakdown, but as long as it's trying to hold this, uh, as long as it's trying to do a small reversal while Bitcoin itself is trying to do a reversal here and break above that, um, and continue to move up after we've broken out above the 20 week moving average, I can see, I can see ApeCoin trying to break out to go to at least $5.25. If we get lucky, maybe it can move back up here towards $6.10 or so, but I, I think that you're going to find that hard level of re resistance up here as you hit this level right you know right there uh now one other thing here for resistance levels if it doesn't have a breakout uh so that neckline for the double bottom here also has to deal with the fibonacci extension tool here if we manage to break above that, then of course you start getting back up here towards 577. Yeah, I mean, I would probably try to scale out anywhere between 525 and 580. You can go higher than that, of course, especially if it starts to really rip. But I, I think that's going to be a reasonable scale out level here, especially with the double bottom breakout. You're going to be having like two breakouts, but also having those resistances. That first resistance is most likely going to be able to be broken out above this, this one right here. The harder one is going to be the breakout from here to here and as it extends a little bit further. But I, I'd be happy to take this trade right now. Uh, I would prefer to buy it at this lower zone here, but you know. Let's go five. There you go. Come on, Bitcoin. Just make one big move. I think we already managed to break out of this downtrend anyway. Yeah, we just, yeah, we just broke out of that downtrend. See if Bitcoin can muster up some strength to kind of pop up a little bit more here. Hey, Brett. Cheers, my man. The AMC dividend. <laughs> there we go. Um, what do you think about Polygon Matic? Good evening, everybody. I mean, I think it's great. I wouldn't be buying it right now. I mean, it, it could still go higher, but it just seems too risky to try to buy it this late into the pump. I would have wanted to buy it on the initial breakout that we talked about or one of those support levels. Much easier to buy, much less risk, much more reward. And the people that bought at those levels, they're able to sell right now or at least start scaling out and starting to really be happy with those profits. While they're, the people they're selling it off to are usually the ones that have a higher chance of losing money on the same trade. AMC Theater Dividend Ape. Oh, AMC has dividends now for ApeCoin? That'd be kind of interesting. I meant the stock Ape AMC Entertainment Holding. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you meant the stock. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. I, hear you saying, I hear you saying. All right. I, I will just not get used to saying AMC Ape. Um... I mean, it just looks like a really nice, like, tasty double bottom right there. I'm looking at quesadillas, burritos, and nachos on my screen, and gosh, it seems like it's just a very nice double bottom. Here's how I would play it, and it'd be a very high-risk play, but this is a very high-risk stock, right? I would have 2 to $2.50 calls expiring two weeks from now uh, with a $3, uh, with a, I would buy a, uh, I don't know, however many calls you want to, uh, expiring next Friday, not next Friday, the Friday after that, excuse me, with a $2 to $2.50 strike price, maybe all the way up to $3 strike price. If they're really, really cheap, sometimes these uh, calls can be inflated just because of um, everybody wants to play with the meme coins, right? Um, you see the same thing happening with Tesla. Uh, a lot of people like to trade Tesla. Their options are like totally overvalued. Um, and I would just let it ride, honestly. And if it does have a reversal and it's at 157 now, if it does go up to 170, 185, two dollars, scale out of some of them, and you know, wait to see what happens. It, it, you know, we don't know for a fact if it's going to turn out to be a double bottom, but I mean, this looks like a pretty good opportunity to have a double bottom and then bounce back up. But the way I'm looking at this now, I would probably make it a 50 to 100 dollar bet 
And I would honestly just wait the two weeks unless something really started to rip off really, really fast. And I would be willing to watch it go down to zero just for the opportunity for it to pop all the way up to like $3 or so. Um, double bottom technical below the 20 day moving average. Um, I wish there was more data here, but I guess everything got reset a while ago. Um, four hour chart. If you want to be more careful, you could try to trade something like this, wait for the breakup to happen here. But by then, you know, you're missing out. You're buying at uh, $2 and 11 cents or $2 and 12 cents instead of buying down here at 156. I'd be willing to make that bet. I'll see if I can make it on Friday with you. Just 50 bucks or a hundred bucks in here. Let it let it go to waste over the next couple of weeks to see what happens. It either go really, really big or really, really, uh, to really, really to zero. Um, but yeah, I think it's fine. And Bitcoin's breaking out as well. Oh no. If I go to the one minute chart, how does this breakout look? False breaking on the one minute chart here. What about this? Have we broken out yet? We're just breaking out of that one as well. Five minute chart. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's see how fast this breakout can uh, move Bitcoin up here. Hey, Larry. I have AMC calls for January for Avatar 2 mid December. I'm interested to see what happens with Avatar. I watched the trailer and it looked really, really good. Um, I like Avatar a lot, but. They haven't come out with a movie in forever, um, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. I'm excited to see where um, where AMC goes in the future. They just had a few too many scandals in the past few months. They need to uh, write their ship up a little bit more or write their ship. Excuse me. Hello. Yeah, I know you're tired. Loki's napping. He's like, stop, stop, stop saying my name. I'm not going to rub your belly. Ugh, I'll rub your nose. He wants to go play. Let's see right here. There we go. Bitcoin's making a little bit of a move now. Let's go to the seconds chart. Uh, the seconds chart might be, there we go. Okay, it adjusted a little bit for itself. So we have the breakout, make a little bit of a move. I just want to see us get up to 21,500. That's all I really want to see. There we go. All right, one second here. Let me tide my head while I take another drink of the good old scotch. Or what is this stuff? It's a product of Scotland. It's a, uh, yeah, single malt scotch whiskey. All right, yeah. There you go. One second here, guys. Ooh, 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 ooh. A little bit of goosebumps here. There we go. All right, let me go see what's over here, though. So Bitcoin's trying to make a move. We're back up to 21,400. That's good news. Um, Let me get some of this stuff on the top. There we go. We got that. We can keep that there. There we go. Don't need that anymore. I'm really happy with this ring. I'm happy it was so cheap. Uh, let me go back over here. There we go. Okay. Let's see if Bitcoin can make it up there. Ah, uh, every time it just gets knocked back down. There's some. There's some wall up here, and I'm just not seeing it. I, I need to look at some level two data. I guess I would say. Over there. Right. Back up to the one. Ah, we're still just slowly grinding up here. We're trying to make a push. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's what I was looking for. These little baby pushes here. These little baby pushes are all we're looking for. OCN and ASPS are my uh, eviction darlings. OCN made almost a thousand percent earnings. Beat 3PS share value 30%, book value 69. Oh, that's not bad at all. I mean, you're probably going to see more evictions at the beginning, uh, probably Q2. Probably Q2. Um, but what's kind of interesting to me right now is, you know, I've been watching uh, CNBC and Fox Business a little bit more of Bloomberg lately. And they've been talking about a, a different type of mortgage that I myself am not too accustomed to uh, learning about. I just don't much know, don't know much about it. But apparently, there's a there's a, there's a percentage. There's, I would say a small percentage of Americans out there 
who have tied their mortgage and used their uh, their stock value, like their asset, their, their portfolios, as a as a um, as a hedge or as a um, what's the term I'm looking for here? Collateral. They're, they're looking to use that as collateral. And if the stock market continues to go down, you may actually see them have to put more collateral up or risk losing the house, which is very, very interesting. I didn't even think about that. Um, but I'm curious to figure out uh, if that's actually gonna lead to more evictions or less evictions or just more, or n not make it that much of a change at all. Go back over here very fast. There we go, all right. Come on, breakout. I don't know. I'm, I'm very impatient for a breakout right now. AXS is still managing to go up higher right now, moving back up to that Fibonacci level of $12 or so. I want Bitcoin to be able to do the same thing here, but Bitcoin just broke out, I guess. So we got to be a little bit patient here. Bitcoin's normally not going to be the most exciting thing out there. We'll manage to break out there. We might face some resistance up here around 21,450. I hope we can kind of continue pumping up here, but we're gonna to have to give it a, uh, a break here in a second We can't just keep going up and up like that. We're chewing away through a wall here. Oh They're gonna lose everything. <laughs> I don't want to be that pessimistic. I don't want to be that pessimistic um, But yeah, there's a uh, there's a lot of opportunities for people to lose money uh, and their homes if They tied everything up to stock tilt to the stock market Probably seemed like a really great idea at the time didn't it? Okay, I'm putting my ring on my index finger. This freaking ring finger is like chopped up by some type of cut I did. Uh, there's our first sign of weakness there, but I might be able to keep on plowing through it. Uh, yeah. All right, let's check out AXS here. Oh, it came back down a little bit. There we go. Still trying to make some moves there. Let me see. Is there anything else though? I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else I need to remind you guys of before I hit the hay here. No. It's pumping up over the last few days. Loop ring is up a little bit. FTM, Matic, hmm. No. No, oh, it's gonna be hard. All right. Do you think Dogecoin will get to 20 cents this year? Uh, it could. Um, it would require Elon to do something, make an announcement though, in my opinion, or for at least the market for Bitcoin to go back up towards $30,000. If one of those two things happens, I'm pretty sure it can hit 20 cents. It'd be a hard thing to get. I don't think we would hold it, but it, we could have a spike up there and just start crashing back down. But yeah, it's possible, it's possible. Um, but okay, everybody, I'm going to go take Loki out for a bathroom break. He needs to go use it. I'll see you guys tomorrow um, afternoon and evening. There's going to be two streams tomorrow. The, t the stream tomorrow is going to be um, in the midday is going to be a stream that's open to everybody, but only members can ask questions. Um, and then I'll be doing stocks only for that video stocks only and then at night we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing analysis for uh, crypto and stocks and everything else involved okay um, but yeah is it too late to buy into Blackstone minerals it's getting pretty late you could probably see one or two more pumps going until the end of winter towards Q1 Q2 um, but it's gonna be harder to make money right now off of it but yeah I mean, you could make money, but just you got to be more aware of what the price action is doing and you have to be aware of where the oil industry is at. So that means more time on your part, understanding how much oil is being drilled, how much production there is, how much refining capacity there is, uh, and what the potential demand and supply issues are going to be over the next month or so, three months or so, excuse me. All right. But yeah, everybody have a great rest of your night. That's a good stock though. Blackstone Minerals has a great dividend play. If you are looking for a long-term play, it's still an okay opportunity to get in, but I would be dollar cost averaging into the play instead of buying all in right now, okay? Thanks everybody and have a good rest of your day. Let's hope Bitcoin can manage to break into 21,500 sometime later.